it's crazy since we recorded this second the the second episode of Talking Chimps. I realize that how muffled my voice is now, but just gonna have to deal with that. I don't want no corona. This is a coronavirus free zone. See? You hear that? Yo, what's my drink, man? That's, Jesus Christ. That's the sound of a. Listen. That's the sound of a coronavirus free zone. Ooh, bitch, you got coronavirus. Ooh, I ain't finna bitch, suck around with that corona. COVID. Dude, do you know how many rappers are putting out tracks called COVID-19 now? Get the fuck out of here. I've seen 20 plus tracks being like, yo, and they try to make like the anthem, like you jumping on that shit. I think one of them has been hot, but even then. There's one guy. There's one guy. It is. You sent it to me. It was G good. G-Mac Cash. That's the only good one. Dude. We're listening to it. Mitch, you got coronavirus. Oh, shit. You got coronavirus. coronavirus. I ain't finna take a trip with this coronavirus. We well, ain't finna take a trip with this coronavirus. Oh, shit. You got coronavirus. Shit. You got coronavirus. We well, ain't finna take a trip with this coronavirus. I ain't finna take a trip with this coronavirus. <laughs> I'm a chill at the crib. I just, I just, safe, because yeah. the people couldn't hear it, I thought I'd give him the lyrics now. It's all good, man. Pretty crazy, though. Because in day, in the Talking Chimps number two, where you were my second guest, mm. we did this the first time, we had... <laughs> we only had like what? You look ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I re- re-watched it today and we had about 15 cases in yes, Australia. that we knew of. That we knew of. And this was about, f- about five weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Not too long, man. And now we're, we're nearing 2,000. That we know of as well. That we know of, correct. I honestly think that it was probably about 2,000 when the cases we know is 13. Whereas now I think the cases that we don't know of are probably at like 100,000 or more. Well, that's a, that's a good point. There's there's some statistical modeling uh, that people have created. Because mm-hmm. true cases is not always the same as, as recorded cases. Because the recorded case is always behind. It is never an exact metric of how many real cases there are. Ah, you can drink that tea, right? That water, right? I, was just, I just remember Didn't as soon work. as I touched it, I couldn't. But. So the true cases are never the same as the recorded cases because re- you have to wait until someone has symptoms and goes to the hospital, then they're worse enough to get tested, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So there are modeling out there you can do, and you can see that you know if you put it into this statistical modeling, then, then sometimes you look at those tens of thousands of numbers of actual true cases around your area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right, Felicia. True. I also tried to scratch my face before. But. Bro, for those who can only listen to us, Alexander Mann has a fencing mask on. What? No, this is this is a mask to stop the coronavirus. Sorry, 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 sorry. He has a special, special coronavirus mask on. Man, it is keeping safe. Uh, the government has specially delivered it to him, but there seems to be holes in it. So I'm not sure about the filtration. Oh no, they're actually not holes. I actually can't see anything right now. They are actually just. Uh, yeah, they're holes. They're definitely <laughs> holes. Um, it's, uh, I poked them in there because I couldn't breathe. And now I can breathe, but I can probably contract the virus a bit better. But I feel like some of the non-holes block the virus. It depends on the, the flow of the air, which makes no sense. But to me, it does. Where are you looking? Where are you looking? You, the camera. The camera don't... Cam- okay, you, the camera don't give a fuck. Why doesn't the camera give a fuck? The camera don't care, Okay, the camera don't give a fuck. I'm right here, man. Yeah, you're right here. I'm That's right what matters. Here, man. But the chimp is here. Chimp is here. Yeah, man. So it's pretty, cr- pretty interesting how the escalation of cases and just five weeks, how different things are now, man. Mm-hmm. But dude, not even, not even two months. And so it's crazy to think, like, if that's what's happened in the past five weeks, what are the next five weeks going to look like? That's a good point. Because we've just gone into lockdown of a lot of uh, non-essential places. People so call it lockdown. Is you really call it lockdown? It's, it's closure. Closure. I guess. I guess closure. People but, use the word lockdown too much. But pretty much everyone in an industry which isn't considered an essential by the government is shut indefinitely, unless they have finds a way around it. Like say, because I'm in the hospitality industry, pretty much every place that did take away or even didn't, that's all they're doing now because that's the only way that the business can make money for them to survive. What are you gonna do? You that's gotta all, adapt. That's, you gotta adapt. That's all you can do. You gotta. This is an opportunity. Okay, I'm gonna take this thing off because I can't talk properly. I'm gonna say some shit. That's better. All right. Well, I'm gonna keep mine on for another minute because. No, no. You keep it on for the entire podcast. I gotta drink this this water. Plus, this is uncomfortable. I'm getting a little. I'm keeping these gloves on though. This is a coronavirus free zone. Coronavirus free. Okay. <laughs> Move, bitch. Um, uh. <laughs> what were you saying? 
What did you just, oh, closure of businesses. Correct. You have to adapt and innovate. Oh, that's getting in my eyes. That's worse than the coronavirus. Oh, shit. I mean, it won't kill you, but it just smells whack. That's that ultra glass. Oh, this isn't even disinfecting. We got lied to, man. This is ultra glass and window cleaner by, co- by cleaner by Coles. It smells like a really sweet fart. Oh, shit. Like, I, I got the ultra glass, glass and window cleaner. You got it. I ain't trying to fuck it. around with that ultra glass and window cleaner. I think I'm stuck in here. <laughs> Do not break it. I won't. It's worth a lot. <coughs> oh, oh my god, the headphones are still on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it's interesting. This is a time now for people to. I'm going to put this mask on. I got this mask actually during the 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 bushfires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was prepared with an N95 mask um, during the the end of 2019 bushfires. And interestingly enough, do you like how my pink gloves match my shirt? I do. Do you like how my blue gloves don't match mine? They do actually. What are you talking about? It's a blue. Oh my god, it does. I'm wearing... okay. Come on, anyway. son. Sorry, I thought. I was what are you green. colorblind? No. And they match the color of your eyes. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Stop it. You got coronavirus. Not yet. No. Um. This mask I got during the end of year 2019 because of the fires and our, our, it was so polluted as we talked about yeah. last time when I was with you. Uh, and now look at how it's coming to handy, man. Well, really, the government should have issued a lot of these out during that. And even now, they haven't really issued them out. I'm amazed they haven't issued... What, to the public, you mean? Yeah. You think you think they should deliver these to the doorsteps of people? Well, those ones seem a bit more expensive, but ones similar to those ones, yes. Hmm. Like, uh, go cause, on. Because remember, I ordered a mask through E, but I never actually went around to pick it up. But I'm pretty sure I could do that at any point. What type of mask? A surgical mask or a filtration mask? Uh, a filtration P2. P2. P2, P2, P2. Mask. That's what I ordered. So that'll filter out about 95% of particulates. Mm-hmm. At a size of about 0.3 micrometers in diameter. Mm. It's like, what the fuck is that? There has been talk that, um, which I don't know if this is necessarily true, that if you aren't showing any symptoms of having the coronavirus, then there is no reason to wear a mask. Is that necessarily true? Okay, it all is it dependent if you have the coronavirus. Okay, let's assume, well, let's assume first you don't have it. Well, obviously there's no reason to, mm-hmm. but you don't know until you get tested. Yeah. So you must assume you do until you don't until you've proven you don't see i like that well that that that's probably it's not that's not the mentality for everybody that's probably the safest most precautionary mentality to adopt Mm -hmm. however you asked is it useful to wear masks when you show no symptoms is that correct Mm -hmm. okay so we know number one we know people who can who have the virus can share it and present no symptoms. So it's called being asymptomatic. You present no symptoms. You have the virus for 97, 97.5%. There was a study of the people uh, in the Chinese population in, Wuh- in, in China who had the, the virus and the population they used. 97.5% presented symptoms within two weeks. Hmm. The median was 5.1 days, which means the middle of the range of people, the t- time it takes to present symptoms was 5.1 days. days. But there was also many blessings there was also 2.5 percent of people who took more than two weeks to present symptoms Mm -hmm. so you can see the range is so big which makes this issue this virus a lot harder yes it's more tricky it's more insidious like a lot of the i feel like a lot of the information we're giving to people can sometimes only be 100 percent correct for a certain percentage of the people that have or do not have it like because there's just like you said there's just a wide varied range of how the symptoms affect people yes and that, that's what's difficult about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the masks, there's two types of masks, surgical masks and filtration masks. Mm-hmm. A surgical mask is not like this mask I have here. This is the feels a filter on it, okay? This is the, oh shit, you got coronavirus mask. And don't surgical masks have, they have little tiny holes, don't they? Uh, I don't know about the tiny holes. I'm sure there's, there may be to help breathing. Yeah. But the surgical masks are there to help you not drip or put any um, aerosolized particles onto onto somebody else. Mm. So if I'm a physician or a nurse and I don't want to mitigate anything falling from my mouth, my mucous membrane onto my patient, and the practical example is what if you're sick, you have symptoms, and you want to mitigate any spreading or coughing mm-hmm. from onto something else. So especially because like you may not realize, but germs can go a long way. Hence why there's a big distance between people they're giving because when you sneeze or cough, even yeah, if it's yeah. into there, 
shit it's not all gonna go there yeah shit will just spread man i don't know if you've seen i've seen this way before like years ago i saw like it was like a ultraviolet visual of what happens when someone coughs and sneezes and you'll see like this big puff cloud Mm -hmm. of particles in the air that would just like travel meters and i'm like whoa it's kind of like a mini explosion yes yes i mean that's a good way to put it okay you just watch everything just like spread in this mushroom cloud and just slowly just evaporate to like a huge range of color yeah and but then it, you know what it can do the the problem is that they're finding that it, this virus can be aerosolized have you heard of that word uh aerosolized does that mean that it can be purified in the air not purified but it, it can stay present in the air and it can attach to things like dust particles hmm. and they did uh they did some testing on the viability of coronavirus 19 on surfaces this is where we figured out it can last on surfaces for many days mm-hmm. uh, and they tested it how long can it last in the air for and they found about three hours but the testing conditions which they did it with they, they, they put it in a drum and they spun it around really quickly it's not like real life it's not like someone coughing yeah. or sneezing but if it was a long time like think about how quickly it could spread because air diseases are the most dangerous diseases airborne yes and this mm. seems to be possibly partially airborne for some period of time depending on the conditions mm. it'd be interesting to know what uh climate condition like temperatures it can like either increase or decrease at like if that affects it in any way well i can tell you um vi- uh, okay number one the hotter the environment so a gradient temperature increase um means that di- the, a virus will die quicker specifically this vi- the coronavirus will die quicker mm. the more humid not so good it can stay present a bit longer um but the colder generally the worse uh so the colder conditions create a longer period of time it will last on the surface isn't that crazy because it's kind of connected to the the flu which is connected to the cold the common cold you don't say i fucking just said it can't you don't say why do you it's, it's not, <laughs> it, it might not, <laughs> it's not i don't think it's a mistake they call it a common cold Maybe because there's multiple reasons why cold though happens more in the winter in the colder environments, but that's it's one true. of them. What well, it is? It is cold. Cold temperatures do lead to a a higher chance of getting one. Why? Because your because your body is more vulnerable. Hmm. Well, yeah, it, it can be from the sense I think if you're especially with you in close compartments with people. Mm. You're closer together with people that proximity is closer so you're sharing more of your bacteria and virus uh, but this can be effective this mask can be effective to filtering out some of the virus because the virus the, in particular this coronavirus it's 0.125 micrometers this can filter out 0.03 so you say hey coronavirus is too small it's not going to filter. Well, this has a range. So this and uh, these N95 masks, they have a range of like 0.05 to 0. 0. 0.5. Mm. So there, there is merit to wearing these to mitigate the inhalation of aerosolized particles. But the predominant transmission seems to be from surface to surface and from other people. Mm. So that's what we're dealing with. I did two hours of this on, on a whole video on YouTube, so... Damn, yeah, I've seen. You've been I've, busy. You've I've been putting out deep, more man. than two hours, man. And that was just one video. Yes, and then I just took clips from that and shared it. Because uh, most people are just headline reading like we mm. talked about, man. Like, if you say some new vital information came out today in the mm. morning, you'd feel compelled to release a video on it so that more of the masses can understand and know about this. I'm going to... Uh, uh, yes, I was in particular about what the Australian Prime Minister said about hoarding. That mm. particularly, um, I felt... Uh, compelled to create something on that because i disagreed completely you disagreed with everything no i I disagreed with his sentiment on hoarding hoarding is classified as a as a um disorder by the diagno uh the the dsim right which is the psychological diagnostics they use um to classify certain mental illnesses Mm. so we need to be very careful about the words we use Mm. because clearly what people are doing is not necessarily hoarding it's preparing for an uncertain future and i've talked about this already but does it oh <laughs> shit oh 
I'm sure that's what the what the people want to hear. Oh, I didn't realize it was that bad in the headphones. That all that is is just little bubbles in the synovial fluid just popping. That's all that is. It feels good. Yeah, so many people think it's bad, but it's actually like just releasing some air. There's very little evidence to show that it's bad. Like, like what? Plus, it feels damn good. Like, do you know the way your it kind of like vibrates up your up your arm and it kind of kind of relaxes man. and the blood feels really warm. That's weird, bro. You might want to see a doctor for what? that one. Nah, man, I just have really good sensitivity. I'm I think you might have coronavirus, dude. man. That might be an extra symptom. Oh, fucking dead. There's a little hairy. You're fucking <laughs> some fucking ouch. So yeah, man. How are you, how are you how are you feeling over the last five weeks? As you know me, I'm the chillest motherfucker alive that worries basically about nothing. So yeah, I'm pretty good. You still at that level? I'm still at that level, man. Well, I don't know. I find like whenever anything, it takes a lot for me to be surprised and worried and just in general. I because I find life so interesting. Whenever anything happens in life, no matter how dire, crazy, weird, or whatever it is, I'm just interested to begin with. I just find everything interesting. So I immediately just pretty much it's probably somebody who just looked on every website, went to Reddit threads and everything. And I, just wanted to, I just wanted to find out everything about it just so I could share with other people like my parents so I could quickly tell them about it, my friends. But, uh, but yeah, I'm not... It's kind of it's kind of odd because a lot of people are going to die from this, right? Depends how you define a lot. I personally feel like at the end of this year, it's going to be hundreds of thousands and i think in the let's, next let, five years it's gonna be millions let's make a prediction this is gonna be interesting because okay. we can call back because i think predictions are interesting because you can test your capacity to make assumptions and assess risk mm -hmm. and then you can reflect back and see how accurate you were mm -hmm. so i'll tell you what we're at now we're at 381,000 confirmed cases we're at 16,500 deaths mm -hmm. and we're at 101,000 total recovered this is recorded remember recorded is not the same as true reality cases correct and we have 168 countries. Yes. So, and that is of March 24th, 2020. Well, that was that was yesterday. What? That was like last week. What? Is it April 1st today? What's the date? You legit? Fuck, what's It's March 24th, man. It's March 24th. Oh, okay, it is today, yeah. I'd say, look how dumb am I? I just touched my, <laughs> touch my eye with my glove, right? But you're wearing gloves, though. Because <laughs> you're contracting all of them. <laughs> This is pretty dumb to for me to do that. Like the glove can still contain oh, a maybe, virus. So take off the glove, touch your face, put the glove back on. So that's the thing. H hygiene of how you take off gloves, which they teach you in in certain university studies, like I've done, is that you gotta be careful about how you take off gloves because you can easily contaminate yourself by taking off the gloves. Mm -hmm. So they'll teach you guys. They'll teach you in like a in these medical units. They'll do like to a double gloves. So you'll take one glove off, and then you'll take the other glove off inside of it. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So, so like you do like this way, I'm like, and then you'd open this one off. I, I get what you're saying. I just can't do it because I'm special. Special needs child. You have an increased risk of coronavirus Most, because of that. I have so many. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a real thing though. There's a lot of special needs children. There's a lot of elderly who are incapacitated, a lot of disabled mm. people. Like it's tough to get care when you're in that position and you have this going wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, like my mum said she called my grandpa yesterday who's in his mid-80s now. Alzheimer's? No, I don't, I don't know what he's got, but like pretty much like he's, he's in his mid-80s. But like a lot of people that are that old and in care, like they're not, not of them, like they're only, they're only, they've only just been made aware and some of them aren't even that aware because some of them don't remember much, right? Mm. So my mum said she visited and she was asking questions and he's like, you're aware of everything that's been going on? And he was just like, yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm aware. It's like he's... And, to me, he was just like, it's just, it's just weird. It's like when you've lived your whole life pretty much and then this happens, it's just like, it's just super fucking weird to you. But like, I think they're probably going to be blocking a lot of people coming in soon, so. Into the aged care facilities? Had, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. If that, no. I think right. that's why mum got in there. Mum and dad got in there early. When did they go? About, I think it was yesterday, actually. Oh, really? I still be able to get in. Is it South yeah. Australia? So South it's, Australia, it's yeah. Not different to Victoria, New South Wales. They don't have as many bad things as us yet. No, they don't. The cases. Um, but it's a uh, yeah. We're looking at a, about a hundred in a hundred and thirty. Oh yeah, our, pr our predictions. Oh, predictions. Thank you. So you got the stats. You remember the stats? Yes, sixteen thousand. Yep. Uh, deaths over a hundred thousand cases. Over ne nearly four hundred thousand cases. Okay, I was very close. <laughs> Go ahead. Make make your prediction and the date. I think before I say predictions, it's going to definitely judge on when a cure or if a cure is found. But let's just say that a cure isn't found. Then I'll make my predictions based off that. Ever or within a time period? Within within five years. 
if no cure is found within five years, I'm going to predict at the end of this year, probably, uh, probably 100 to 150,000 deaths. And I predict if probably in five years time, if there still isn't a cure, then I'm going to predict for probably, probably three to four million. Okay. All right. And where do you think will be the most worst hit? Or is that too hard for you to tell? You don't have enough data um, on that? Basically, anyone that doesn't have... Not who, but where? Countries. Where? I'd say probably Africa and South America would be the worst. Mm. US has really gotten really up there, man, for cases and, and the climbing of deaths. Yes. But we'll see how overwhelmed their medical systems get, especially New York, man. New York's gotten hit pretty hard. Mm-hmm. A lot of people bunched up there too. Yeah, man. That's such a dense city. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, look, I think it's... A lot of medical professionals, virologists, experts in the medical, this medical, these medical fields, uh, predicting that this may take, like, if it takes twelve months to eighteen months, which some are predicting to create a vaccine, that would be dramatically faster than it, than it's ever taken to create a vaccine. Yes. And so I think the five year thing, people would be surprised that you said it, but if you look at in contrast to others, it's actually somewhat seems to be more accurate. So medical professionals are are telling us 12 to 18 months for a vaccine. Historically, it's taken multiple, multiple years. Mm -hmm. I don't know which in particular ones. I'm just going off what I've heard. So do your research. Um, So it's all dependent on how quickly one finds a vaccine and how quickly that's distributed and how the efficacy of it. How safe is it? The, The vaccine. Yeah, and you also got to remember that the vaccine might only work on a certain percentage of people, so they need they need to find a vaccine that works on a hundred percent of the people, because sometimes that's how it goes. Hmm. There's there's I don't think yeah. There's always going to be a a certain amount of the population you would assume that won't respond well Mm -hmm. uh, and could die and get ill. I actually found out the other day that they're actually looking for to test to get they want to infect people with coronavirus but have them as patients to test on. And they're offering, uh, I think, seven thousand dollars. I saw that. There was that's seven thousand dollars, which I'm tempted to do, by the way, because I'm young and healthy, and I that's seven thousand dollars. And I don't mind being quarantined because I'd find shit to do. I is Australia offering it? Yes, Australia is offering it. Australia's offering it. To my knowledge, yes. I don't know what I think about that. Well, it's a risk. It's a risk, but it's a risk in a way to help find a cure. That's the whole reason for it. You're being, you're being, you're being given the virus so that they can find a way to look at your symptoms and see if there's any updated symptoms that they haven't seen yet, ways that they can look at curing it. Like it's, mm. all, it's all a part of long term. Would you look into that? Are you going to look into that? Um, if I get to a stage where I'm not finding a lot of work and I'm struggling financially because I don't want to turn to other people for finance. For I'll, prostitution? I mean, not only am I going to get sexual transmitted diseases, I'm probably going to get the coronavirus. So you know what? Get ready, Jimmy. It's coming up the ass today, buddy. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'd probably if if I wasn't gonna find if I wasn't financially secure, it'd be something I'd do because I feel like my health and the coronavirus, I'd be able to get through it. Plus, I'd be around a lot of professional people. So, mm. it's so, calculated risk. It's a calculated risk. It's a risk where I, if I do, if I am fine, I get rewarded for it, and I could be rewarded for it through finding helping cure it. Yeah. So. There's many, there's many good risks. We'll put your all. name on a building, the Alexander Mann vaccine building. How about we just call it the Alexander Mann fucking estate of all awesomeness and kind? It's a long name. Uh, it's a work in progress. Yeah, acronym that one. I hate acronyms so much. Especially every rapper has to have a fucking acronym on their album. Fuck off with your acronyms. <laughs> fucking just what, say what, words. What, why do acronyms trigger you so much? Man? I don't know, man, because it's lazy. Acronyms are lazy. Hmm. Like I get it. Just say it. I get it. Like lol, laugh out loud. It's weird when people say that in person, isn't it? Yeah, but I say it in person. You do? And I'm weird. Sometimes yeah, I'll be like, ha ha ha, lol. lol. And people look at me just like lol. Okay, that guy's that guy's kinda cool. That never happens at all. That was it, a lie. Yeah, is that what you say to yourself? Sometimes yes. Or well, every day, yes. Yes, I'm cool. I'm cool, cool, cool. Well it's good to have positive affirmations about yourself, you know. I am a very positive being. Wait, what were your predictions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, so, 
I have to add caveats because that's what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, one depends on when we found a vaccine, and depends how well these countries respond to to this pandemic. Mm-hmm. How quickly they implement certain strategies to mitigate spread. Yes, we're doing it in Australia. Where week by week we're adding new things. Mm-hmm. We're not tearing the bandaid off hard and just going fuck. That's it. Don't move for the next two months, which we should be doing. Well, I think it's going to probably come to that point and we're probably going to have to spend longer doing that yeah. because we didn't originally do it. Now, I might be wrong, but if you look at the trajectories of where Australia is going on the cases, uh, the double, the rate of cases increasing, we are trending in the realm with a lot of these other countries that have this around 30% increase. Um, I think it's every three days. There's some great graphs that I've cite- cited in my original video mm-hmm. uh, on this, which is slightly concerning. Um, we'll see how well we respond to it. Yeah. But I'm dancing around the answer. And How are you dancing? C- you know what, though? How about I start off, because I've actually documented this. I've documented other people's uh, projections okay and I'm gonna start you off so here's a projection that I heard first in January February Wuhan will peak in a month the rest of China in one to two months then the rest of the world that wasn't me that was someone else we saw that tick you good? what you good yeah I was just having a little cheeky yawn but <laughs> you know how it goes. Uh, the next one this is by Paul Graham who is a uh, I think he's a medical expert Look him up. People aren't surprised when I tell them there are 13,000 COVID-19 cases outside of China when I tell them this number doubles every three days. But when I tell them that if growth continues at this rate, we'll have 1.7 million cases in three weeks, they're astonished. Now, from my understanding, when he said that, when we're not quite there yet um, at the 1.7 million mark within three weeks. I can't remember exactly when he said it, but he may have said it about two weeks ago from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Now... Uh, another project, uh, projection. So some people are talking about 100 million by May cases we're talking mm-hmm. uh, based on the exponential nature of this spread. If the number of cases were to continue to double every three days, there would be about 100 million cases in the United States by May. This is math, not prophecy. The spread can be slowed. Public health professionals say if people practice all these social distancing and avoid public places. Okay. So, I think it all depends on how well we do. And it's such a dynamic thing. I th- a lot of people compare this to the flu. And they say, oh, the flu kills 50, 60, 70, 80,000 people a year. Whatever, you heard that before? Yes, it kills a lot of people every year. Yeah. Problem about this is that you're comparing a static statistic to a dynamic statistic. Meaning, it's only been about four months since we've had the coronavirus. And you're comparing that to a 12-month total statistic, which is not, a, is not a reasonable comparison. So we have to see what it looks like at 12 months. Moreover, there's different um, incubation periods and different medical systems get overwhelmed. There's a lot of layers, different spreadability. So I think, let's call it by the end of 2020, start of 2021, I suspect that we will have, hmm, how many cases... If we don't find a vaccine, I think we'll have cases in the millions. By the end of this year? Yes. Oh, cases. So not deaths, cases. I'm going to start cases. I think we'll have cases in the millions. I'm going to guess somewhere between three to five million. Okay. The deaths, I think, will go over the... They will increase over the total influenza uh, death rate. Over 60K. I, th- I think it'll reach, oh man, I was just speaking to a, fr- to, a, to a good friend just four or five days ago and he, he showed me, look, people are freaking out over like 10,000 deaths. Can you believe this? And we had a conversation, but just four or five days ago, we're at around 10,000 deaths and now we're at nearly 17,000. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's a pretty large relative increase in, in, in that amount of time. And so by the end of the year, I think we'd be looking at around... 100,000 to 200,000. Let me call 100,000 to 300,000 deaths. How many deaths did you predict again? 150,000. Okay. For the end of this year. I don't want that to be true. I want to be wrong. Of course. Everyone wants to be wrong when they're predicting the worst. I, I don't think that's the worst, though. 
that's the thing. I think the the worst would be like some people are saying like oh the pop like fifty to six fifty to seventy five percent of the population of the world will be infected. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. I I can honestly. I honestly, you know how you said you're, you predicted that only like, was it 1 million is going to be infected by the end of the year? Uh, what, did I, what did I just say? I said multiple millions. Um, yeah, I, I reckon, it was a range, like 1 to 3 or something. I reckon, 3 to 5. I reckon hundreds of millions are going to be infected by the end of this year. Bro, I just realized how small of a number 3 to 5 million is relative to a population. Yes. The population of the world is what, 8 million? Nearly 8, 8, 8 billion? billion. Yeah, 8, nearly 8 billion. Bro, America has like 350, 360 million. Yeah. Man. When you put it like that, it's like, holy shit, maybe I'm being way too conservative. You also got to remember that only 20% of the cases are fatal at the moment, is it? No, no, less than Not that. Not 20%. It's, it's like... No, if it's 20%. It's like, less, it's like less than 1%, isn't it? Okay, let's clarify this. Yeah. One, it depends on country. Mm -hmm. Italy is looking at... Right now, Italy is looking at around an 8-9% case fatality ratio. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for every person that gets infected, 8 to 9... Sorry totaling all the people who get infected when you divide it by the number of deaths we're looking at about eight to nine percent mm -hmm. um the worldwide average around th uh, three three and a half percent okay people uh, countries like south korea who are doing a really good job and japan doing a really good job at, at controlling it we're looking at like below one percent around okay um and the usa is somewhere around that one two percent mark okay so country dependent but worldwide we're looking at around three to three and a half mm -hmm. but what did you hear something was it my foot oh okay i'm here these these headphones are so good at like hearing sound i'm like they are it's like when i was cracking my knuckles before where you were it was like it was amplified anyway uh and it but the, to give you a context the flu is 0.1 percent mm -hmm. approximately so 0.1% of people who get it and most, go, die. I think most people that die are over the age of 65 as well, aren't they? Yeah, so it's a yeah. similar... Because they have a weaker immune system. Correct. And so even if it finishes up and people think, oh, okay, by the time this is all over, the, the, current, the case fatality rate is going to be about 1%. So 1% of people who get it will die. Guys. That's still a lot. That's 10 times worse than the flu. Let's say, say for example, 50,000 people die from the flu. Maybe, oh, I didn't do my math right How? then. Say 70% of the world gets infected. 70% of, let's just say, I Let think do let's, some math. Let's just, it's, I think it's 7.8 billion is at the moment. Let's, let's say 8 billion. So 70% of 8 billion would be, well, 50% would be 4, 60, 70, 20. Let's just say 5 million, all right? 5 billion. Say, say 5 billion people get infected okay. with, a one, with a 1% of them dying. That's what, 500,000 people? I'm going I'm to do, I'm doing, do that quick math. Um, because there's a lot of zeros right now. Uh, no, that's five million. One percent of five billion is five million. Okay. So say there'd be if seventy percent of the world got infected, five million people would die. I think. Or is it fifty million? Just just do mass. I'm my mass is crack. It's crack. It's a lot of zeros right now. Can can you can you Google it because I'm I'm doing the division wrong. People are gonna be listening like these fucking chimps can't even do basic division. It doesn't matter if we can't do basic division. We're just talking, Guess man. Guess what? I can't unlock my phone because of my fingerprints. I'm coming for you. I'll divide this ass I, up. Dude, I can't use my phone. I can't swipe or... 1% and Wait. people screaming at, their, screaming at their phones. It's fucking this. What am I looking up? Am I using a calculator right now? Is that what I'm meant to be doing? 1% of 500,000... Five billion. billion is 50 million. You're correct. Yeah, 50 million. You're correct. So, w what the hell did I say? What did we say for deaths? Well, I, well, I said I said 100 to 150,000 by the end of this year because I don't think that it's going to... You don't think there's going to be that many people infected by then? You think this is going to be over a five-year period? I think there'll be lots of people infected, but I think a lot of, a lot of, the, the, a lot of it will just stay dormant. I feel like it's it's, true, I true. feel like it's not going to get out of control well, until that, yeah. until probably two to three years later. I think the I think two thousand if we haven't found a cure in nine nine to twelve months or longer, I feel like two thousand and twenty two to two thousand twenty five will be the rough, roughest years. Really? Yeah. Sheesh. So you, so I imagine I think people f suspect that this is how it's going to go. People suspect that we're going to have this big peak and then anyway, go on. We're going to have this big peak like we're having we're peaking now we're increasing it's getting worse and worse 
and then we're going to do a good job at containing it and then everything's going to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. But you suspect that that's not going to be the case. Is that right? If there's no cure for Alan, yes. So why do you think... I have some suspicions on why that may be true, but why do you think that was going to be true? That there isn't going to be a cure for Alan? No, no, no. That, that the worst years will be in the years to come. Oh, because I feel like there's... I feel like at the moment, because it is, it is spreading quite rapidly, right? I think we'll get to a stage where the government can't quarantine people forever. I feel like they'll have to get to a stage where the numbers will drop a little bit. They'll feel like it's, it's like, and they'll be like, okay, you can go back to your normal lives. I feel like we'll get to a stage where we'll presume that the worst is over potentially and yeah. people will be allowed to go about and that it's just going to make it worse again. Yeah, man. Because all it takes is like a couple of super spreaders. To spread it yeah. to like thousands of people. And also people can't be locked in for so long, man. Like people will go crazy. People will riot. People, like sooner or later, people are going to break the rules and just fuck it up for everyone else. Man. I think you'll start noticing things like depression, anxiety, suicide go yes, up. Yes, 100%. I think that's going to be a indirect consequence of this. Mm. Um, autoimmune issues, I think, are going to increase because of all the hand sanitizer we're using. Mm -hmm. so when, especially kids who don't get... Um, a lot of their bacteria from their environment that is helpful to their immune system. Mm -hmm. But if you go back to that statistic, so basically when we look at 50 million deaths, it's like, fuck, yeah, that's, that ain't no seasonal flu. That's, that's a fuck lot. Fuck lot. That's a lot. 50 million. That's more than the population of Australia. Yeah, it's double, man. Mm -hmm. That's as many kangaroos as we have in Australia. <laughs> but I love kangaroos. Yeah, they're, 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 a, they're a pest species in our country. Yeah, and. And they're very high quality meat. And if you eat meat, then consider getting away from factory farms meat and having some high quality yeah. game meat. Kangaroo, very lean, very good for you. Absolutely. Lots of iron. We talked about that on my... I spoke to Lockie Kennan about that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, 50... So basically what, what the world's trying to do is... Sp have you heard of flatten the curve? No. So if you imagine this curve, I'll do that in, in, a mat, in like a, okay. for you right now. Is this big spike of cases and deaths, and then it peaks back down. It's like, imagine all 50 million people getting infected and dying. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but the population, the biggest spike is early on, and then that's it. But what happens then? Economies and medical systems get completely overwhelmed. So many people now more die because there's not enough ICU beds, there's not enough ventilators, to, because a lot of people who get hospitalized need breathing support. Okay, about 5% of people who um, enter the hospital need ICU. Mm -hmm. And feel free to fact check me on that, but I got that one from Dr. Peter Atia. Shout out. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's, he is a incredible uh, resource on health. And they're noticing in New York, well, they only have access to about 1,000 ICU beds and they can maybe get maybe about 2,000 if they move it from other yeah. um, wards. Which are going to need a lot more. But that's the thing. They do, people are doing math on this and the time is running out, man. If it keeps going at this rate, hospital be hospitals will be overwhelmed like they are in Italy. And um, then what? I was talking to my friend who's a nurse mm -hmm. and she said that all of the hospitals in Melbourne have had like big meetings and stuff and they predict that in the next three weeks is when the first masses of patients is going to come three weeks yep that's about right and so they've got face they've got basically all the beds all the rooms up they've got like locations outside the hospitals that are all set up for like excess people mm -hmm. like so they're they're prepared for it man they're like good they're expecting the worst because after like I've, I've read a lot of articles about what's been happening in italy and over there it's just like they're just like so many people are dying so quickly that like most of those people that are working in the area are probably going to have PTSD for the rest of their lives, man. Man, that's another side effect. Just the emotional overwhelm. It's it's like a war, man, with the amount of deaths going in Italy like all at once. It's crazy. I've, I looked at a video today of um, a Madrid hospital that's been overwhelmed. Man, there are people lying on the hallway floors with masks who are infected, just coughing and just lying there, just... Just fucking lying on the floors. Do you remember when I was last here and we chatted and I told you about how there was that video that I found in the Wuhan hospitals where it was so overcrowded and there's bodies littered in between? Yeah. Yeah, man. So many people... It's predicted. Yeah, like... This it, was predicted. But if that video was more spread to more people because yeah. the government kept that 
like hidden so that it wouldn't spread fear. But sometimes I think fear can be a good thing. Well, well he, not to everyone, but to me, it'd be a good thing. Well, I get it, man. There's a lot of people coming out, especially in my field, who are like, don't let fear drive you. Don't let fear take you over and cause all this anxiety and, and psychological stress. And I get what they're saying. And mm. I think they're right to an extent. You don't want that to be your life. You don't want to operate on a 10 out of 10. I'm f scared. I'm fearful every day okay. for weeks. That's terrible. No way to live. No, you'll die soon and you'll get diseased. But... Tell them. That's true. Yeah. People who experienced more stress die earlier. That's not just a nice thing to say. It's researched. Fuck, maybe I will make it to like 100. Man, maybe you will, man. Imagine if you could just start exercising consistently, eat super well, get great sunlight. Fuck, man, you'd be a superhuman. Well, I'm already starting to eat better, but if I get control of my fitness and more vitamin d i'll be a fucking immortal the be one of the best supplements that you could take anybody could take is vitamin d with a k2 supplement well, i give vitamin d to people every day <laughs> you did last night i heard too you know what i'm saying hey, you know what i'm whoa, saying yeah, but good, good, good. jesus christ yeah. what type of fucking men are these motherfuckers chimps be it's chimps man what do you expect you are watching talking or listening to talking chimps do you expect us to behave do you expect a chimp to behave in a zoo and how are you gonna expect us to behave I we're in a fucking zoo it's called the fucking planet spinning around in a marble hurling through space wondering when the fuck we're gonna get off this ride never <laughs> we're stuck and we're in a milky way which is in another universe and another universe and another universe and another universe did you see the video <laughs> I just want to cut out everything you said then and just have those like a short. It was great. Did you see the video of the chimpanzee that threw its own shit at that grandma on a wheelchair? <laughs> you know I fucking didn't see that, man. For real, legitimately, there's this chip that's in a zoo and there's all these people watching and there's like a family and there's but there's this grandma chilling in a wheelchair that's, and the chimpanzee oh. just like grabs, just shits it to his hand and just pelts it and hits the grandma smack bang in the face no. and just falls over it. And all the family's just like, oh, the chimpanzee's just laughing. No, the chimpanzee wasn't laughing, yes, surely. Yes, it was. Chimpanzee was laughing? Google this shit right now. It's hilarious. This is worthy of our time. See, we're talking about COVID-19, but then you're also going to have a little bit of fun on the side as well, yeah? Laughter is good for your soul. So it's medicine. Chimp? Throws shit at grandma. Throws shit at... I don't know if shit's going to come up. Throws poop. Throws poop at grandma. That's more, that's more politically correct, okay, isn't it? Because yeah. we can't say shit. Hold on, hold on. Should I come around to tell you? Because you don't know what it looks like. Well, uh, let me just say that this is probably the one. It's the chimps jumping up and down. Oh, he like flicked it from underneath yeah, him. Yeah, you see, he just... the and she, is that the one? She gets hit in the face? Oh, she got, <laughs> she got him right in the face. Yeah, it's like hanging got, off her nose, right. man. And the chimps just sitting there like... Ah! Oh my goodness. Everyone's yelling. Oh, this poor lady. She's like, what just happened to me? Yeah. Everyone's around her laughing. And <laughs> oh, damn. What a shot though, right? That chimp was like... Bro, that's, that's hard because he did the underhand. He didn't mm. go overhand. He did the underhand yeah. flick from the, per uh, the perineum. How stealthy was that? Like if you ever want to like throw shit at people and like do it stealthily, do the underhand flick. Why do you think he did? Do you think he's trying to assert his dominance? I think he's just bored, bro. <laughs> Look yeah. at him, he's in captivity. Aren't we all? I still don't fuck with zoos. I mean, don't get me wrong. The people at zoos look after those animals very well and create habitats for them that are beneficial. But in the end, they're wild animals, yo. Like every time I go to a zoo, I'm still fascinated. I still enjoy seeing so many different animals, but I just, I just don't like seeing animals. Like, I feel like I like some of the zoos in Australia where it's all Australian animals and they're not even captivity. It's just like heaps of areas. Like, there's one in... Um, Werribee. Werribee's one. Werribee Open Range Zoo. Yeah. And also there's another one I went to in... Hillsville? Heathcote? Yeah, Hillsville. Hillsville. I went to that one. Yeah. I love those ones because it's super open and all the, most animals there, it's their natural fucking habitat and environment already. Yeah. So, I fuck with that. But if you're going to import heaps of animals from, from overseas away from like their own home and habitat, I'm not, I'm not with it. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I like seeing them, but I, just, I would rather them stay where they're at. I, I think there's a lot of merit in what you're saying, what people say, but what do you think of the, um, the pros to zoos? The pros to zoos are if they are an endangered species, mm -hmm. then a lot of those zoos know the means and hows in which to look after their young well. It knows the means, like a lot of zoos that have endangered species, most of the time, they actually get the, 
the numbers up a little bit. Yeah. And then they do release them back into the wild once the numbers are a bit more better. So that is one of the pros. But then there are the cons of um, it backfiring as well. The problem I was speaking to keepers in, in Singapore Zoo, uh, which I went twice to, speaking to the keepers there, and, and they do have things like pygmy hip, hippos in because they're endangered Very. in their zoo. And the problem they were explaining to me about re-releasing is, number one, if the root cause of why they became endangered hasn't been addressed, they're likely to die and be, and, and be a victim of the same problem that caused them to be endangered in the mm. first place. And especially if like a lot of them have lived their lives through zoos and they're, they're just going to... They're probably not going to be familiar with their natural habitat as well. Like yeah, it's still that's another thing in DNA, but it's definitely not as present. Well, man, think about it. Think about what we've done. Yeah, man. As hu- Homo We're sapiens. The <laughs> no, no. I mean, but like, think about Homo sapiens. We have essentially softened ourselves from our old natural habitat over the millions of years. Yeah. We used to be hunter gatherers. Then we used to be farmers. Agriculture came in. And now we became these cushy, soft creatures. Yeah, we probably used to have a lot stronger bones. We had a lot more hair. We probably we had, did have a lot more hair. We ha- we still have a tailbone, so I assumed we had tails at some point in time. That is interesting. The coccyx, yes. Yes, that does... I don't know. But it's true. We've evolved to a stage where I think we just don't need any defense because... I mean, it would be nice to have something to protect your brain, maybe, but... <laughs> We got this skull, right? Skull. This cranium, but shit, man. I don't do shit. The brain is so fragile. Like even if you get like a slight, oh sorry, I didn't realize that was it. Like a slight knock, your brain will still hit the sides of your, yes. your cranium, and that can cause damage long term. Exactly, and we can see this in sport. We can see this in car, in whiplash, car accidents, concussions. Yeah, man. Like you can get a concussion from headering a soccer ball. Yes. My brother played plays football, so it does. But he had a few concussions. And when you have a few concussions, you are more likely to get them a lot easier. Yeah. And he got to the stage where he was having concussions every two to three games, man. And they at, he's, he had to actually start wearing a thing, didn't work out. And they actually had to be like, look, you can't play anymore because it's too dangerous. Because he had too many concussions. That's fair enough, man. Yeah, exactly. And it's sad because people love doing it. But but look, man, the, the consequences of brain trauma are serious. Mm. What the hell are you doing with that? Yeah, good one. I'm just, dude, I'm keeping everything disinfected. Yeah, keep the feng shui going, man. Yeah. The ultra glass and window cleaner. Exactly. And man. a coronavirus here. Exactly, man. Chronic traumatic encelop... <sighs> Jesus. Chronic traumatic encelop... Are you trying to say encelopement? I'm definitely not trying to say encelopement. <laughs> I am tripping over my words because it's a tricky word. Encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. Chronic traumatic anthropology. It's a basically a neurodegenerative disease that you get from uh, consistent brain trauma and concussions. Yes. Okay. And it could take years for the symptoms to come, but they can come in the forms of like anxiety, depression, complete changes in your mood, Mm -hmm. like uh, tendencies for aggression and violence, which you saw in the movie Concussion by Dr. Omalu. There's a movie called Concussion? Yeah, Will Smith is in it. Really? You didn't know that. Hell no. It's actually, I think it's a pretty decent movie. The way you said that means it's not a great movie, but it's worth watching. Correct. Also, Bad Boys 3 was great. Go see Bad Boys 3 if you haven't. <laughs> Shout out to Bad Boys Shout 3. Out. That was good. That was a fun fucking time. It was, man. Um, I think that thing, it's such an interesting, like, I remember what we said about how Martin and Will, you could sense the chemistry, mm-hmm. took a while to... But then once it hits, up. then it hits. Like yeah. You tell like when they're on set, it took them a while to get back to their own ways. Yeah. And you can see that, I think, in even the, the movie. Mm-hmm. In the timing and spacing of the movie. But man, it was fun. I think it had all the elements it of did. the old bad boys. I agree. And honestly, I think Will said like, look at this movie does well and people want another one. We'll give them another one. But I think it's got to do really well for it, that it, to happen. It's got to, man. Because the people got to want it. But it is still the highest crossing film of this year so far. Is it really? Yeah, because people can't go out and watch anything else. Well, <laughs> it's going to stay that way, there man. A, there was a joke of being like, Bad Boys 3 is going to be the top grossing film of this year because no, there's going to be no oh, competition. Shit. Yeah, man. Cinemas are closed here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to see like, Oof, you know, like, would you eat? Garlic. You ate just a, lo- a clove of garlic? Fuck no, I'm not a fucking Neanderthal. I ate garlic bread. See, that's what I'm saying. Do you have any protein? Someone else did. 
last night. Hey, that's it's gonna affect Tinder, man. Dating has it affect you? You do the dating apps? Yeah, that's the only way I get laid these days. <laughs> yeah, who, who who needs in per? Who needs to talk to people in person? Well, I like to. It's just dating apps is just easier. Um, How but, much easier do you think it is? Uh, like, could you quantify it? It's easy in the way that you can legitimately be upfront, honest with exactly what you're after. And how do you position that? How do I position it? Yeah. I write it on my bio. What do you say? Stuff. What do I say? Yeah, what's your bio? My bio right now is I'm here to ultimately disappoint you. <laughs> that's it? Yeah, that's it. Well, man, you're starting the bar low, so it's only up from here. But it's honesty, because most of the time when I'm with, with women, like, you know, I'm, I'm a nice person, they'll be getting on with me, but normally they'll either want more or they'll, not necessarily relationship wise, but normally they'll want things which I'm not really going to give to them because I don't like seeing someone for long periods like I'm I, just, I love having a huge range of people in my life mm. and seeing them all in short sporadic bursts because I also value my own time a lot and normally when you meet someone and you're having a lot of fun with them they want to see you a lot or they want to message a lot I am terrible at messaging I'm flaky as fuck I'm not punctual as we've learned today again I'm sorry <laughs> So that thing can grind on a lot of people. So normally when I first meet someone, I feel like if I do spark with them, then because I'm such a, you know, a fucking dope ass personality, <laughs> they're like, they're like I'm, I'm sitting at this high, right? They're like, fuck man, this guy's awesome, blah, blah, blah. And then it can only go down from there. And it always does. It always mm. does. It never goes higher. The only, the only time it goes higher is if it's already fallen and they give me another chance. Hmm. But all those things, if you want, you can address and work on. If you want to be a better person, yeah, there's music. Oh, someone else is here. Yeah, there's, there might be somebody training themselves. I hope they didn't want their coffee cup. Well, too late. All those things, though, you can work on. Mm. Do you want to? Do you aspire to? I think I am already, to be honest. Mm. I think I am already a lot, a lot more of a... I'm, I'm a, I'm a much more better person than I was. More developed? Yes, I'm a lot more upfront honest now and I have... I think I care more about people than sex now, which is a, a, something that I didn't think would happen a lot. Like I have a lot... This year, I have more female friends than I ever had in my life. Hmm. Because if I'm hanging... like I think already in the past few weeks, I've hung out with four to five friends of mine that were female and sex hasn't crossed my mind once. Because I'm generally just I'm interested in their lives, That's how I can help them, and enjoying their company. Whereas a year ago in my whole life, even if I'm if I have a friend that's a girl, besides one, like there's one girl in my life that I've always never thought about sexually and just been really close to, and that's just a blessing. But everyone else hasn't been like that. But now this year, well, basically what I'm trying to say is before this, if I was hanging out with someone that could potentially be a friendship, all I would be thinking about is fucking them because that's all I wanted. So it's nice to now be at a stage where I have so many women in my life that I consider to be friends and I will just help them and enjoy their company without thinking of anything else otherwise. It's refreshing. It's a sign of growth. It's a sign of, mm. you know, there's still people in my life that I won't look like, like that, but it's not everyone. See, that's in it's interesting because sex is important. We know intimacy with another person is important. Yes. It's critical, actually. Mm -hmm. But it's only one component exactly. to a, a relationship. It's and people let it overwhelm them and it becomes the predominant. It's like, holy shit, that's all I can think about. This is it. I gotta, you gotta like, it's like a goal you have to achieve. It's like an outcome mm -hmm. you have to get with a certain person. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, it's still a large part of it, but in the large scale of things, mm. it's a very small part of it. It's become more small, huh? I think so. Well, it, like if it's not like good or if it's not really present there, then it affects every other small thing there and it breaks. But if that little small thing is good, then I think it makes sense with everything else. Does that make sense? <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes the words you say make sense. Uh, rip lock like one, bled luck, bully gudugask. That made more sense. <laughs> really? Fuck, how? What did it mean to you? Why do you think you care less about sex? I'm just getting older. Yeah. I think I'm just going to do a stage where I haven't really... I've had... I haven't really had any relationships. I haven't really... So, ladies... Men, listening out there, aliens. Well, fucking. There's some openings. Cunts. I'm not thinking about it now, but I'm more open to it now. Okay. I think I'm more open to meeting people, and instead of just jumping to the sexual 
conclusions and then keeping that going the ending of that i'm now more open to actually getting to know people and seeing if there's an opportunity of having that person be more okay so you're more open to the possibilities of uh future developments in relationships yes i think i am now i'm not looking for it i'm not thinking about it but i'm open to it i think it gets to a point though when you bust so many nuts on or in women that you just get to a point where it's like all right my my uh what's his name dan bolzerian lifestyle is uh coming to a slowdown god i hope my mom watches this did you watch the first one I don't know, but she is definitely is watching things and giving me a call and be like, Alex, I'm not comfortable with this. And I'm like... What was she not comfortable with? Me talking about busting nuts for an hour straight. <laughs> when have you ever done that? All the time. Jungle Beats has been, uh, <laughs> has been music focused with a side of busting nuts. Yeah, it's never busting nuts with a side of jungle, with a side of music. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. When we get especially off topic and the album is especially bad. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nuts <laughs> but yes yeah, so i'm just i'm just uh it's nice i feel like i'm growing into a better person now mm. i've still got a lot of things to work on but i feel like i have been i feel like a lot of things that have, i have been getting better with like growing wise i haven't honestly thought about too much it's just it's just happened it's just a part of growing you know your body changes your brain changes things change Absolutely. you just adapt and evolve and that's what people are having to do now more than ever mm-hmm. right it's honestly a bit weird of a time because I I think we need this, man. I think we need to be challenged so we can adapt and evolve. I, I, I mean, I don't welcome everything that's happening, but I think with every bad thing that happens in life, it, it ends up opening up a lot of different routes for us. Yes, every, every adversity and misfortune has an equal seed of benefit and opportunity. And that's Napoleon Hill. Is it? Shout out. Is he dead? Yes. Shout out. Anyways. If he's not dead, I need to, I need to check this now because I actually don't know. One thing I do love about these things that happen in life, though, is um, it really brings out a lot of the good in people. Don't get me wrong. It brings out the bad, but a lot of the good comes out. Like, I and mean, I feel like if you have long periods of time when no grand scale of events happen, then sometimes humanity can forget what it's like to, to do good things for other people. Yeah. Or to sacrifice a lot of themselves because... There hasn't really been much like bad that's happened over the past hundred years. That's that's true, man. And I think you, the especially for our generation, for people who are under sixty, mm-hmm. right, under fifty, then what are we looking at? When was the last wars? It the was v- the Vietnam War was the last, I think. But even that war with the Iraqi, but they're not big. The large, I think, the last big scale of war was World like, War Two. Let's talk about something that affected everybody. World War One. When is the last time? We all had a common enemy. The whole world had a common enemy and it was invisible. The Black Plague? That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like viruses and bacteria. And there's this awesome history of pandemics diagram uh, by Visual Capitalist. And like HIV AIDS, that was the 80s. Mm-hmm. That affected 25 to 35 million uh, deaths. Mm-hmm. The Black Death, the bubonic plague in Black the plague. 1300s. Yes. Guess how many people are killed? Uh, probably, don't tell me. I'm going to say hundreds of millions. Man, you're not far off. Yeah. The plague originated in rats, spread to humans via infected fleas, which is just fucking re- crazy because fleas, man, it's tiny and they fly. And they're everywhere. But they don't fly, they jump 30 centimeters. Oh, they can. They can't fly? Well, that's fleas. good at least. No, they, but they can jump a lot. Like You can't see them. Well, some you can see. Fuckers. But they can jump up to 30 centimeters. 200 million, approximately. Yeah. That, that's the biggest death toll. And you've also got to remember that during the time that this was, the, the world's population wasn't what it was now. That's true, man. The world's population was probably just over 1 to 2 billion. Oh, let's not check less. it. Let, that's, a good, that's a good point. I reckon less. That's why it was such a huge event, man. Because population. That was at the You know when you see all those, the masks? You know the people that wear the big giant, the bird masks as a sign of like the apothecaries? I don't know what that is. Like apothecary. I know what the mask you're talking about, but yeah, what yeah. does it mean? Oh, well, they were the signs of doctors. So if you saw, but the reason they wore those masks because of to to stop the black plague from from them getting it, but also a sign of them being a doctor. An apothecary is someone that is a doctor but only uses the means of herbs, like herbs and medicine. Like, okay, so like, it's a like natural, natural exactly. But back then, that's all there was, man. And even then, they couldn't really. There wasn't really a cure. They just kind of just. They just did everything they could to Man, stop it. Imagine being born in the 1300s and having to deal with the black motherfucking plague. Yeah, man. 
what the fuck? Like back then, if you caught any form of disinfection or, or sorry, infection or anything, you're probably gonna die, man. So many people would die. That's like the, I think people would have the the life expectancy would have been what. 50, 50, 50s back then? Or uh, that's less, another question. I'll give you the world population is estimated to be somewhere between 350 million around. Yeah, there you go. Bro, you're telling me the... Okay, but let's give the range because it was a year, many years so that this the, went on. So there you go. So probably half the fucking population of the world would have died. 1347 to 1351. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about four years approximately. Five years of just fucking death. Yeah, man. And fear. The Black Plague is such a fucking crazy era of humanity, how, man. How did, how, did, how did that happen? And who found out? How would you start... Like, how many people have to die before you start thinking, what's going on here? Man, I don't know, man. It's... Who, you're it's, not calling up. You're not communicating. You don't got phones, bro. Yeah, you, you're it's not... The 1300s. How are you communicating with the rest of the world to, hey, hey. You can't. Is this happening to you too? There was no way to communicate with the world other than fucking boat travel. It arrived in Europe in October when 12 ships from the Black Sea docked at the Sicilian port, oh, Italy, of Messina. Yeah, Italy's kind of like the, the crux. I think Italy's behind all of this. I think Italy that's it, man. Destroyed. Man, this getting some conspiracy theories. Yeah. People gathered on docks were met with horrifying surprise. Most sailors on the sh abroad the ship were dead. Those still alive were gravely ill and covered in black boils and oozed blood and pus. Mm -hmm. You think you got problems? Man, you ain't got black plague problems. But imagine over half the world's population has been decimated, man. Think how many bodies were being buried. Think about how many... I think I remember reading... Because we learned about the Black Plague in high school in... I think it was grade 9 or 10. Yeah. And there were legitimately just people carrying just carts with just bodies just on there because they'd just be cleaning up. They'd just be like grabbing all the dead and just grabbing them and just burying them in mass like areas or burning. Because what else are you going to do with them? There's Holy just so shit. much death. Look at this. The Black Plague is estimated to kill 30 to 60% of Europe's population and may have reduced the world population from 475 million to 350 million. Jesus Christ. That's exactly what that shit did. Now, hold on. A rough estimate of 25 people, people in Europe died from the Black Plague. Now, that's 25 million. That's not 200 million. So that's interesting. I don't know. Maybe that's the rest of the world? Either way, it's still in the millions. It's a lot of people, man. And especially in a time where there was a lot less people than there is now. Yeah, relative population, like, that's a huge decrease. I can see, oh my God, blood and pus. Smallpox in the 1500s. Mm -hmm. So you, you got like two generations next. The right. Smallpox is still around. It still kills people today. Is it really? Yeah. Sure about that? We, I mean, don't get me wrong. We've, we've got a cure for smallpox, but people still die from it, man. Mm, okay. Not everyone has a means to get a cure. It's interesting. The, the, the World Health Organization certified the eradication of smallpox in 1980, which is not that long ago. But here's the concern. So they are concerned. So global warming, the, the, the ice melting, the earth heating. Mm -hmm. What's happening is this... Uh, permafrost is melting and that covers so it covers the earth the permafrost is melting and underneath the permafrost are like corpses of dead bodies specifically animals especially and so what they find is happening is that the corpses of these animals get released because they now get access to the air so when you put something in ice it's like frozen it's yeah, it's not every, a threat every, yeah but once it's but once it's unthawed Yes. I mean, unthawed, thawed? Once it's thawed. Yeah, thawed, there you go. <laughs> to be unthawed, it would be exactly how it is. Oh, here we go. Um, an anthrax outbreak affected 90 people, and one boy died in 2016 in Russia. The outbreak spread through a reindeer, and there hadn't been any anthrax outbreaks in 70 plus years. So imagine that. Anthrax is coming back, and it hasn't been in 70 plus years because of a fucking reindeer. That got frozen. That's got frozen. So the permafrost is a layer of earth that stays frozen year round. Every year the soil above it thaws, but the permafrost is supposed to stay frozen. Mm -hmm. Most permafrost is situated in the northern hemisphere around the Arctic. When plants and animals die in these areas, they don't decompo decompose. They get preserved in the frozen earth like a time capsule. And so now with the effects of global warming, permafrost thaws, melts, and it leaves the, the above ground uh, unstable, which can lead to landslides. Mm -hmm. And then they start to thaw 
and then they're exposed to the air and bacteria and organic materials start to decompose and then they release greenhouse gases like CO2 and methane but that's not all they can release diseases and they think in Russia because the anthrax came from the reindeer and the question is Ew. don't so do that bro still, uh, don't do that man that's nasty yeah, go on stop so sweaty ah come on man so trying to get that coronavirus I ain't trying to fuck around with that coronavirus um, how many other diseases do you think are out there, man? From all these animals that are going to start melting? There's always going to be diseases Bro, out there. Bro, what if the fucking Black Plague comes back? Because some old, like, old 500-year-old human... You, you do know now that like the Black Plague wouldn't be as bad today because Bro. we have means to cure it. Do we? The 1300s... Do we, though? We, there was how do we have means to cure it? We, Through te- scientists and labs? They didn't have that back then. But I'm saying is that if we've never sequenced and genetically sequenced the 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 vi- the, the virus of mm. black plague to me that that would take some time to figure out mm. we might be able to do it quickly or it might be a multi-year thing how can we be so confident well i feel like even if the black plague came back we'd have ways to slow it down I think we would, of course, with yeah. modern medicine and healthcare and it hygiene. Be, it might even be similar to the coronavirus now. Hmm. Well, if the coronavirus happened in the 1300s, it probably would have killed maybe not that many, but still a lot of people because they would have had no way to stop it. Plus, I feel like everyone would have no immunity, <laughs> hardly any immune system in that age. Like a strong immune system, you mean? Yeah, man. Hmm. Because there would I don't be. Know. A, yeah, I don't know either. I'm just sprouting my brain. I don't know. Like, this like a Spanish flu, the in the Spanish ni- influenza. That that's that's a lot of people compare that this to, and in the, the ramifications that it could have. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of plagues, man. The plague of Justin Tinian in the five hundred, five hundred. Say the plague of Justin Timberlake. Hell no, Justin Tinian. Because that was his last album. <laughs> <laughs> look, look how many. Hey, the third plague, the Antoine plague, the 17th century great plague, the Asian flu, the Russian flu, the Hong Kong flu, the bird flu, the swine flu. Jeez, the the, the, the yep, the yellow fever, the Ebola, the MERS, the SARS. Wait, yellow fever, I got okay. that. What? I. <laughs> hey. Oh, is that where it comes from, huh? I guess that was the first real yellow fever. Was uh, <laughs> was this late 1800s outbreak? That's where it comes from. Does that, where do you think it comes from? What if it comes from Asia? I mean, I, I probably think it would because the people that named it probably were white at that stage. Guess what, bitch? Is Africa. It, is it actually? Africa and South America. <laughs> How weird. Yes. It ref- the yellow refers to the jaundice. Well, I guess the Black Plague was mainly in Europe, so... Well, that, does that mean white. the White Plague is going to be in fucking space? They wouldn't call it that. There's too much. People get too sensitive. They wouldn't call it the white plague. But there's already a black and yellow plague. Yeah, but that was that was created in a time where people, Didn't care the poli- about political, uh, what do you call it? Masses. Be- being politically correct wasn't a thing back then. It was just mm. this is how it is. Shut your mouth. Get to work. We got we got fucking food to feed you. We got fr- we got farms to sow, seeds to sow, shit to do. You know what would be really fucking cool? What's that? If uh, if during all of this we made first contact with. Out of space life. Woo! Imagine if that shit went down as this shit was Bro. going down. And imagine if the outer space, imagine if the, the outer space people who made contact with, contacted the virus and got that back to their planet, they blamed us and we were just like a war with them because they blamed us for it. Bro, imagine if an alien, an extraterrestrial life got the coronavirus and it fucking decimated them. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> fucking viruses. That was a sound from my laptop. Um, imagine that. Or, or, they were immune to it. Either way would be would be interesting. That's why in a lot of movies you see when people are seeing different life for the first time, they're wearing all these hazmat suits and stuff because they have no of course. no knowledge about it. And everything about this being like, we don't know what, what do they breathe at all? If they do breathe, is it the same uh, chemicals that we breathe? Yeah. Like, like it's so weird. We, like wherever you grow up in whatever environment, your DNA evolves to a point where to adapt around you. Like, who knows mm-hmm. what they've adapted around? Everything mm-hmm. they might have adapted around might be something that doesn't exist here whatsoever at all. It's it's just so it's so amazing and fun to think of imagining what could possibly exist. I have a couple of things. Like number one, what if we become the aliens? We are. 
Like, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, 200, 300, 500 years from now, what if we become the aliens? We live multi-hundred year lives. Our, we become, like, one with machine, and we become, like, mechanic... What would you even call it? We become these, these cyborgs? cyborg creatures. Yeah. Yeah. Or sentient? What's the definition of sentient? I think sentient is part machine, part... Uh, isn't, it, isn't sentient a consciousness of a machine? Allow, okay, sorry. Oh, well, it's con- allow... Sorry, able to perceive or feel things. Mm-hmm. So what people are concerned about is machines becoming sentient, mm-hmm. right? Like in X-Men. Like there was... um, I think it was... I don't know what, which one it was. Uh, I just watched one of them. It was Days of Future Past, maybe, where they create a a machine that is able to adapt to all the different powers of the X Men. Is that okay. the is that the one where he puts on that giant helmet? What? Okay, maybe I'm just. And this thing can adapt to everything. Hmm. Like imagine if th- there's a there's a we become the creature that adapts to everything, and we become this limitless sentient ultimate being. Bro, I'm excited to see how humanity goes. I was talking to my friend about the other day about this. Like, I actually don't want to die at like 50 to 100 years old. I would love to live to like a few thousand just to watch humanity evolve. Like, just how hmm. amazing would Future it be? Future armor this shit. Yeah, how amazing would it be to just continually just watch every hundred years like us evolve and learn and just progress like i find that that's one of the most fascinating that's probably one of the best one of the main reasons i i I enjoy living because i love watching the progression of things that's one of the greatest the greatest things about living yeah i think it's the progression of yourself and the progression of the world around you right i fucking love it man like remember the first iphone that piece of piece of punk the piece of brick that was but that was so revolutionary for that time mm-hmm. and now we're, we're nearly at the iphone 12 shit and i never had one you never had an iphone i don't fuck with apple it's... i just bought one man i just bought one i uh fuck. My, you know i'll tell you what happened my google pixel mm-hmm. 2 it great phone pixel is a dope ass phone great phone but the, the great camera which is one reason i bought it but the hardware there was a problem with the hardware the camera app just stopped opening one day Heaps of people were finding this issue. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried to fix it, couldn't fix it, and then I got. A, I was able to get a full refund. What you doing? I'm I was able to get a full refund off it, and then I used that. Right, what am I going to do with this eleven hundred dollars? Well, I could do a lot with it. You could get an iPhone. And then I'm like, it's a very user-friendly system, though. A stripper party. What? <laughs> Strippers? They ain't. The clubs are closed, bro. Yeah, true. Clubs, bars are closed. Well, the ones you know of. Trust me, there's still going to be a lot of places out there which are open on the low without yeah. anyone knowing yeah. and telling all the locals, regulars, or people with it's money. True. Trust me, that shit's still happening, man, because people have got to make bank. Well, there's a couple of things. There's a police task force that's going around actually checking if businesses are open or closed. So there should be. Yep. With $20,000 fines coming your way if you're mm-hmm. open and serving people. Uh, but it doesn't stop people congregating. Like, I think the prime minister or, or the or the premier of victoria said like you know this is not a time to everyone hang around your house now mm-hmm. and congregate in like large groups of people mm-hmm. what's going to stop that the only thing's going to stop that is the individual yeah we i'm still going to do my podcast within reason yeah that's one person though what's stopping fucking jane inviting a dozen of her friends or his friends um Ain't nobody gonna stop Jane. She's fucking. She's pretty hot. <laughs> she can do what she wants. That's what. Hey, man. Yeah, Jane's popping. Jane, <laughs> Jane's got the whip, man. Jane's got the juice. Jane's. Chill. You swipe right to Jane on Tinder. Has Tinder affected this? I bet Tinder's been affected. Have you gone on less dates? Have you noticed that? Uh, I don't really go on too many dates. But you know what I'm saying. Seeing people. Yeah, I know you well, say you don't date people. Well, probably once. I'm probably honestly after this week. I'm probably going to try and... Well, basically, even even on this week, even just... I kind of just want to try and minimize my time around people as much as possible now. Because even though I know that I haven't shown any symptoms yet, it could be dormant. Correct. So I don't want to be the reason that someone out there gets it, you know? Fair enough, man. But, um, uh, it's a real thing. Yeah. But I want to see my homie, so... Sometimes you're going to make sacrifices. Man. Yeah, you're going to make exceptions to the rules sometimes. But, man, I just think it's going to be a matter of... Oh, what was I going to say about aliens? No, I wanted to say one more thing. 
Um, so we're going to become the aliens. Yeah. Oh, another thing. You talk about like, what if extraterrestrial life comes to this planet yeah. while we go through this? Has no one thought about natural disasters happening? Motherfucker. Things can compound. Right now, the world is focused on this sole issue. Mm-hmm. Every, almost every single person on the planet, except for the monk on the mountain or the person who's three hours away, doesn't have any access to the internet, they wouldn't know. The majority of the planet, we have all this one common invisible enemy and his, its Climate name. Change. No. Well, yes, that's a, that, that's a common enemy, but that's also very controversial among some people. This climate change, climate, climate denialist. What were you going to say? I'm going to say, man, what the fuck are you going to do if a solar flare from the sun happens next week and all of our electronics on half of the planet go Ooh, out? That would be the What one. the fuck then? More people die. Chaos. Fucking Black Pig ain't got nothing on a solar flare and a viral outbreak. I was actually reading today that there's a there's an asteroid that's going to go past the Earth soon. Oh, in come April. on, man! But, it, but it's not it's not going to hit, but it's going to fly by. Yeah, it's just hello. It just it's just going to wave at you and just say, "Yep, my my next guy's coming through." I don't know when he's coming through, but he might come by next week, next month, next year, and he's going to say also, hello and drop what by. What about the places that can get large grand scales of earthquakes? That's because the Earth's fissure plates aren't getting any better, man. Tectonic fissure. Yeah, tectonic plate, sorry. The they, plate. Sorry, they cause fishes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yep, tsunamis. Mm-hmm. What if a tsunami hits a, a, a local coastal town that's being, uh, is hitting a hospital that's being overwhelmed by an outbreak? Yeah. Like, there's going to be a lot of places, well, maybe not a lot, but there are going to be situations where people get fucking unlucky when it rains, it pours. That's 50 cent, man. When it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours. I love that saying, man. It's legitimately my life. When something good happens, a lot of shit happens. When a lot of bad happens, it piles on. I think there's a part that your minds can control. I think... We talked about this last time. Did we? I don't remember. You don't remember? Anyway, go on. But like, if shit happens, like how you respond to it is important. Mm -hmm. And how you respond to it and what the things you say to yourself, your self-talk can help dictate what's going to happen next. So I will never use language that like, oh, I don't want to get the something, something. Mm -hmm. I don't want this to happen. I don't want to get the virus. I don't want, I I don't want to get sick. I'm not even speaking that into existence because how you use your words is important. I know this is like woo woo California fucking (laughs) woo woo kale smoothie motherfuckers saying this, but, and I don't want to be in that, I don't want to be associated with that, but there is a real thing with the your words are powerful and your self-talk is powerful Mm. and so if you can convince yourself and trick yourself into being in a better state mentally then your body will follow so it doesn't have to pour when it rains doesn't have to thank god nope you're in control motherfucker i am in control and so the natural disasters man I just it's a matter of time we're fortunate i haven't heard of many natural disasters happening this well, well that you there know. was a volcano in philippines uh but look man you also gotta remember that a lot of the shit that happens in the world they don't tell us yeah well who's they countries that aren't european or american well the i think it's the media like doesn't report on a lot of it because no like say when my sister was living in a in like Samoa and when she was living in like near Tanzania yeah uh, Somalia like all those sort of areas she'd always send me links of shit that had been going down like either mass terrorist attacks or bombings or things that are happening and I'd be looking online nowhere mm. the only place you can find it is the local news there which they know about and I was just like there is so much that happened and that just made me think if, if I'm hearing about this from one country think about all the other countries in the world where we don't hear about the shit that happens there man it's nuts. Well, that's a great point. There's a hundred and... How many countries do you think there are? I think uh, it's 192. Oh, I'm going to say 200 and, 208. I think there's about 192. 195. Oh, you were closer. And 168 countries uh, have the coronavirus. Man, give me a flight to the one that doesn't. Iceland. Doesn't, doesn't it? Shit. We're looking at 86% of the world's countries have recorded cases. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, hold on. Greenland. It has four. 
Greenland's fucked. Antarctica probably wouldn't have it, right? Iceland. You said Iceland doesn't have it? Mm-hmm. Bro, Iceland's got nearly 600. What? Iceland's tiny compared to Greenland. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's like 1 20th of the side. But you got to remember that Greenland, a lot of that place is uninhabitable. Uninhabitable? Yeah, that's the word. Uh, Svalbard has none, looks like. I'm just looking at the red Where? Dots. Svalbard. Where the fuck is that? That's next to Greenland and above Russia. Oh, I didn't know that. Man, Russia is huge. Russia's the largest country in the world, isn't it? Maybe it space, is. Space-wise it is, but you gotta remember, same as know. Greenland, a lot of Russia is uninhabitable because it's just purely just rocks and ice. What was that video game that was based in Russia? With, uh, it was like a nuclear- Metro 2040. Yes, before? yes. Did you ever play that? Fuck yeah, that game was fun as fuck. Heaps, lot, like lots of dark. He had like a torture would be running out and heaps of like sneaking and really easy to die. It was a really good thrill. It was game. difficult, wasn't it? It was hard, but it was fun. Really cool story too. I fuck with it. It's like as if Germany had won the war. 2033 like, or 44? Uh, they've got a few actually. They've got a lot. They've got a lot of games now. But I think it was 44 was the first one. Wow, man. I mean, yeah. But yeah, it was pretty much the whole uh, design of the game is if Germany won the war, what happened in Russia? Oh, so it was the opposite. I think it was, yeah. So it was the opposite of the reality. Obviously, Germany didn't win the war. Yeah. Did, um, wait, they didn't? Oh, sorry, bombshell. Hitler's still alive. Don't know if you've heard. He actually made the coronavirus. Man, there's always rumors around for everything. <laughs> he actually made it. It's like there's always rumors like Osama bin Laden's alive and like rumors like... They're chilling with Elvis and, Hen- and Hendrix all in the same room. Oh, man, it's just... People want to believe those things because it comforts them. Tupac and Biggie are still out there. Of course, it's a comforting thought to think that. Is it? It's not com. Yeah, well, how is it not? It's it's not comforting to think your heroes or your idols or these amazing people are, are dead and gone. Yeah. What do you think about that one with the? Who was the guy that went to prison and apparently killed themselves? But then there was no like proof. Remember that? Epstein. Rem- yeah, is it Epstein? Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein. Um. Whereas, don't get me wrong, he is definitely somewhere still. And did you hear that like? His bank account that had like heaps of money in there was like it, it, it had just been accessed like not long ago and someone had withdrawn a large amount. I didn't know that. Look, man, that case is. Oh, man. Like a lot of people believe a lot that. Of details. A lot of people believe that like he basically just faked his own death and is just living somewhere else right now and is just like living life. Because if you got the money, but you can do anything. I don't, I don't know. Did you hear well, Harvey Weinstein has the uh, coronavirus? F- really? But he's, in, yeah, he, he's now, but you know what? A part of me thinks that maybe it's a story for him so that he can be distanced from other people because think how many people in prison want to kill him. That That's... guy has done some fucking, so he's probably found a way to distance himself. Like he's probably, he probably like faked maybe having the coronavirus so that, or maybe he did got it on purpose so that he can be moved to another facility away from people. Be something he'd do. Look, man, that's a, uh, it wouldn't it be interesting if he died from it? There would be a lot of people celebrating that. No, they wouldn't. People want him to suffer in prison, bro. If he died, it's like the easy way out for someone that's lived a really fucking disgusting life as he has. I see your point. Yeah, may, may, maybe that maybe they wouldn't be then. Like I don't wish I don't wish suffering on anybody for any actions, but but some prisons, man. Like, look, I've never been to a prison. I've only seen video footage and hear accounts, but I hear some prisons can be relatively. I shouldn't even say it. I don't even... I should... Do it. Do They're it not now. good. They're far from good. But... You're fed consistently. You have... Like, for people who are... Uh, who come from very troubled backgrounds and who don't have much, you can imagine how, like, a, a very impoverished person, not that Harvey Weinstein was or is can go up to a prison and be like, wow, this I got structure in my life. I, I'm eating consistently. I have housing. I have a bed. I have a bit of a social life. Mm-hmm. You can see that there are some structural benefits compared to what some people were living at. Fucking, is Harvey Weinstein going to get treated like a golden prisoner? Because they don't want him to get killed by anybody? I don't, or I don't think they care. They're going to knock him off, just like they did Epstein. I mean, if you believe that he was actually knocked off. Man, I don't have enough details on the case. I'll, I don't know, right? But I've heard some things and the evidence is suspicious. It's very fucking suspicious. You don't say. I fucking love a good theory, bro. Well, how about the theory that potentially this coronavirus did not... Well, there's a couple. Was designed by humans? 
potentially in a way to to stop the human population from going too over so oh it's a God. way to it's a way to cull. we've talked we've talked about yeah. this man like they just need to look at the reproductive value and see go i was gonna say don't get me wrong like the human population like we are overpopulated as fuck but if you could wipe out a lot of the older generation of humans that does solve a lot of problems for humanity and overpopulation like so what you're saying is we should kill all the old people. No, that's not what I'm saying. All I'm, I'm saying, talking, but... all, all I'm saying is that when, if, if, and when this is all over, hmm. as much as it's terrible that so much death and chaos is going to happen, on a good note, which you like, not, not many people will even mention this note. The world will have less people in it, which means we have more uh, materials and things to to compensate for more people in the world. Well, consider this: you also have now less people to make things. Yes. So. That's a problem as well as part of that argument. Like mm. people make things, people distribute goods and services. Yeah. If you kill people, you have less people to give goods and services to, but you also have less people to take them. Uh, I feel like less is always better at this stage, man. We have too many people in this world. Based on what? Based on, I don't know. It's a nice thing to say, but it's, I think, unless we have some hard data or some tangible things like, why? Why, I mean, why like are there our, too many? A lot of our oceans are getting thinner. A lot of our woodlands are being stripped. Like it's getting, like the reason climate change is going so quickly is one because of the gas emissions we're releasing back from mm-hmm. vehicles, factories, yep. and us cutting down so many trees for building more buildings and like, and all of that happens because we need to create things for more people and more population. Right. That's what it leads down to. So I feel like cutting that down as much as there's people that might not might not have as much business because there's less people at least the world will be better for it okay i hear what you're saying um and while that that may solve the problem temporarily here's why i don't think that would work it's the same thing with the coronavirus what's happening with global warming with overconsumption of everything with with we just have too much too many goods and services Mm. whatever everything's too much like you're saying so it's a big spike upwards yes everything is rapidly deteriorating our earth our air our water our food supply okay now let's say we knock off half the population yes everything else stays the same right okay good now what's going to happen we're going to flatten the curve and now the damage won't be as rapid awesome but the damage still goes on Hmm. unless you change the behavior and the habits and the thoughts of the population and so while having more people is definitely a very real component of causing damage and consumption to the earth etc yeah if you don't change the behavior then you're going to get to that point anyway it's just going to be at a later stage does that make sense it does make sense but do you do you yeah go I was going to say, but it just all depends on when things are, get to the stage where it flattens. Mm-hmm. It all depends on what we do at that at that moment. Like, does humanity ad- adapt, evolve, and try to be better, and then yes, it goes in a better direction, or is like you said, we just continue the same shit. Exactly. It all depends on when Agre- when, yeah. when when that graph changes. Yeah. It all depends on what we do then. Agreed. Because. Look, we have to be proactive rather than reactive. A, a lot of people are reactive. They wait for problems to happen and then they want people to fix them. I work in a field where this exists. People wait, most of them, not all, for their health to deteriorate, for them to be in daily pain, for them to be no energy and be overweight or be sick mm-hmm. or injured. Yeah, a lot of them just don't do anything until it's pretty much too late. Right. And so we've seen that problem around the world with this pandemic. We see this problem all the time. We've seen it with global warming. We're we're, we're trying now, Mm -hmm. which is great. There's Earth Hour later this month, and I will be participating in it. Um, Is Earth Hour when you cut off all electricity for an hour? You'll cut off all all emitting resources for an hour. It is this Friday, the 28th of March, between 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. Uh, uh, Everyone to get on board. Yeah, I'll jump on. That Do- doesn't take much. We should have an Earth week. Uh, yeah, really, an hour is fuck all time. But obviously, like some places you can't, like hospital and stuff. But I feel like an Earth week would be amazing for humanity. If you can get people adhering to it. But here's what interesting to me: what I like it's at night. Go outside, and if enough people do it, 
hopefully be able to see some stars. Like mm. if a city turns all of its lights, like if you could just flick a switch off. Oh man. Man. It was amazing when I went back to South Australia. I think it was like six weeks ago now, whatever. Yeah, how but was that? I mean, it was, it was all right. I got to see my family, but it was like, yeah. But, but the, the big thing was like, I was on the beach with my family. It was at nighttime and I just looked up and I just completely forgotten what it was like to see stars, man. Cause it'd been so fucking long. I remember just looking up. Cause you know, like when you look up here, you see like the odd view. Yeah. I saw the entire Milky Way, man. It was just like- It's amazing. Thousands, if not millions. Just like everywhere I looked, there was just, there was, it was hard to see like little spaces of black, man. The whole, the whole st- sky was just white st- sparkles. And I was sitting there going, fuck man. You forget that this shit exists. It was beautiful. It was probably like the best memory I had of that trip. Sorry, mum and dad, but you know. <laughs> How did that make you feel though? When you look up at the stars? It made me feel slightly emotional and very thankful to mm. be living and to be able to witness things like <sighs> that. That's exactly it, man. We've become so disconnected from the humility of being a human being, of the gratitude of being this yeah. thing, this living thing like what witnessing that is just a part of just ex- like enjoying accepting and just being happy with the things that are presently there sometimes you just forget about it as i did i forgot that shit existed and then we become we forget we do forget we live in cities and we forget hmm. your minds get more preoccupied yeah money work problems sex life and don't get me wrong, like there are things, they, those things are important to you, but there is just a lot of little things on the side which used to mean a lot to you, but they just gradually just factor out because you just forget it's even there. You find other ways in life to fuel you. I think we need that, man. We, we need to be humbled by... Oh, man. It's such a weird thing when you think about it, when you really think about like... Like this, look at all the stars, man. Those are planets, those are stars. Um, like, and we're just one of them. Yeah, man. We're one of them. That's why I'm waiting for some alien life, bro. But yeah, it's, it's, fuck, man, it's crazy. It's like when you look at people taking all those photos of like, like the Andromeda galaxy, for example. It's so beautiful, but there's so much more. And that's only like one like spectrum of everything else, man. And then I was actually, I watched a documentary on Netflix not too long ago, which is all based upon black holes, Mm. which I recommend anyone seeing. Like it's a bit repetitive, but it has a lot of theories. And it was great watching like from the very first astrologers bringing forth the theories of black hole and how it's like gravity has a lot to evolve in it and how it slows down time and everything else. And basically when it was first issued, it was during a time where it was so religious. So to even talk about that was like kind of punished by, you know, prison time or death even. And then it got to the stage where there was some uh, astrologer that was in the UK. And this was around the same time that Albert Einstein was a big figurehead. And Albert Einstein said, look, everything you're bringing forth to me, I don't think that it's true, but I want to be proven wrong because I think it's exciting. And they, it's really cool. They had this little parchment, which they both signed and, and they said, whoever's wrong, like will just like admit to their own what doing. And this guy actually proved that black holes were real and that everything that, the way that they worked and the way gravity worked was proven to it was crazy like they explain on the documentary how they figured it out and it's it's just it's like it's like basic maths but like they just it just becomes so much more i know i'm rambling a bit but no no, no. it's all good that's what we're here for but uh it was it was nuts and i guess the stage where albert einstein's just like look you've proven me wrong and he like he like signs it and the guy has it in like his his office and right. then it just goes and then it just kept going through like new astrologers like like from 10 to 20 to 50 years apart and then just like expanding it wow isn't that it's got to be a um a challenging feeling when you feel like you're right but all your peers and everyone else thinks you're wrong mm. but you're right and you will be later proven you're right yeah like how many times do people feel that and they give up they give up on something they're actually right about I feel like a lot of people would man I feel like think about how many times in the history of the I guess earth someone has been right about something but you never even would have known that because they would have just forgotten about it. then someone later on the line would have done it then because it would be more acceptable or they would have been more will stronger will to come forth with it like mm-hmm. i feel like so many people would have given up on study that would have been right purely because their peers would just pressure them yeah and there's a quote when you fall on the side of the majority it is time to pause and reflect hmm because if you're on the majority 
Well, what's the majority nowadays? The majority, the average person is sick, diseased, unhealthy, overweight, works 150 whatever hour weeks, and is doing shit that they really don't want to do. So if you're in the majority, maybe it's time to pause and reflect. You say they're working 152 hour weeks. A hun- sorry, 100 or 50 <laughs> long, long <laughs> hour weeks. Yeah, doing, doing shit they don't want to do. Because it's probably what, there's only... There's 168 hours in a week. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get... You, you got that. I knew that. I was like, there's 52 weeks in a year. There's 24 hours a day. So if I do that, I'd have to... I know that because um, with all the clients, one of the questions I asked them in my, my consultation questionnaire is, where are you putting your 160 hours in your week? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people's excuses are, oh, I don't have time to do this, to work out. Da, 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 da. So I want to eliminate that by figuring out. And you more often than not, people can't calculate all their time. Or they spend a lot of their time doing things that could be more productive. Mm. So it just suffocates any of the BS excuses. BS is in bullshit. Correct. You know, YouTube will, if you have cursing in your videos, uh, you are l- more, you are less likely to earn more revenue from your videos because higher CP, higher CPM commercials won't be put in front of your videos clicks per minute it clicks per thousand oh. um, actually no it's impressions per thousand if I remember correctly fucking the, the way YouTube does it's so IPT <laughs> yeah it's really what it should be called <laughs> um, dude YouTube's gone to shit man we whoa, jump, whoa, we, whoa 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 we're on YouTube now man no, we but, love YouTube but, YouTube I mean don't in, take us down I mean in terms of monetization oh, uh, yeah. money made from advertisement sponsorship like People don't know. Every multiple times a week, I'll get another email. Your video has been demonetized. Dude, I saw you day. A fucking Justin Timberlake uh, shit in the woods got it. No, the Justin Come Timberlake on. review we did on Jungle Beats, that what he's referring to is it got blocked in all countries. It's like what? It took you what three years to do that? Justin got onto us. He was like, "How dare they call my trash worse than trash? They should just call it just trash." Uh, so this is the thing man people aren't prepared for when these natural disasters happen mm. in the light of already of an already current disaster quote unquote what if we have another what if the next summer has the same amount of bushfires or even worse what if now uh, a lot of our emergency responders now have to be distributed to uh helping with the fires it's probably going to happen, man. The world's not getting any cooler. Hey, now that we're in it. You bloody better luck in the later, mate. I mean, it's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a weird catastrophe when that happens. Um, but there's, a, there's so many things that can go wrong. Do you think it might get to a stage where it'll become... What's the word I'm looking for? What's the word when the public are forced to help? Oh, um, uh, enlisted service. It was the military term, like yeah. when you're enlisted. Like, do you reckon we'll forced get to enlistment? St- yeah, enforced. Do you reckon we'll get to a stage where the public, between certain age groups, will be enforced or have to enlist in a certain period of time if the world gets to a stage of more chaos and more disasters? I don't think it'll get to that point. I mm-hmm. think that's more of a world war type of. Um, situation yeah i don't think we'll get to that point i just i just think there be there's too many measures being implemented people are responding too much for us to get to that point for us to need non-medically trained personnel to help like they're all i'm already hearing that they're getting medical students to be they're telling medical students in australia in melbourne be on call be ready we may need you Mm -hmm. students right and so you can imagine how wh- where this may go and uh, where it could go. Imagine being in World War One and having your name enlisted in school. Phew, what, you're 17? My great grand my great grandfather was. Really? Yep. My um my grandma in her house, she has well she did. She she has a she had a giant like picture and it had like his face with all the medals he'd made and his belt. Mm. 
and like all that but he so he survived the war he was a general but he was first enlisted through school he was just in class i think he was i don't know 16 17 however old he was but yeah yeah he just got he's got his name picked out and he had to go imagine being that you're just in school you're still learning you're still in high school yeah jeez like you were still a child and you've just been drafted through a pick of a name of a cap it's like i'm sorry but you have to go to this war you have to be trained your life is now forfeit and your life is now war and my grandma told me he was a really hard parent he still had so much like guilt and i guess ptsd like he still had like he was just a hard person he just didn't really smile or laugh that often but he was like he was just a harsh dad but he was still a good dad but but that was all through like imagine your life just being changed through the government deciding we need more people to go to war yeah i just can't even envision like if i was you should fucking envision it envision it it's dude if i was in school and my name was drewed from a from a fucking hat i wouldn't go to war i don't want to fucking kill anybody that sends you to jail then just like, just like they they did to Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay. Yeah. Well, actually, he, did he go? No, no. I think. Did he end up going? Because I know we changed his name, and I know there's a lot of. Uh, I know he would. He didn't want to fight against his own people. But yeah, I, I don't know if he did go to prison, but I think didn't he get out of it? He was meant to. Maybe he did. I think yeah, he did, he did get out of it. Um, he but he was meant to, yeah. Oh, oh. I, I couldn't kill anybody. Like, I would I would rather go to prison than fight, man. I'd try and run away and do something. I'd do all I could. But I guess when you're that... probably But when you're that age, you don't really know how to make your own decisions. In and sense. it's the environment too. Like, literally the whole world is on edge and everybody's like, all right, this is it. We're scared, but we're going to war. And they we probably, have to fight. And I reckon they probably would have created like a lot of advertisements throughout the world and yeah. like to make it more of a positive thing like to make you feel like if you get picked it was a good thing like they used it as a being a pride thing yeah, like, like you get to represent the united states of america you yeah. should, you're doing this for your country it's a good thing that you're enlisted and i reckon a lot of kids would be like yes i got picked and the parents would all be obviously be angry but like the children through all advertisements would probably just all be like fuck yeah i, re- I reckon they would have done that because how else would have they got I mean, more people yeah to- you have to design propaganda uh, when you're in desperate times i love the word propaganda good word it is it just flows off the tongue propaganda propaganda propaganda's all over the place propaganda's here propaganda's there we might be propagandering you right now i think if i'm going to start a band i would call them propaganda well more than that probably like propaganda chimps propaganda puppies i mean now you're just throwing words together I'm, it's alliteration what about propaganda propaganda uh, precise propaganda now you're just throwing words around <laughs> uh propaganda's proprietress did you, sorry continue. did you do you any stories from from him did he survive from the war my great-grandfather mm-hmm. he did he okay. survived the war he was a general wow mm-hmm. he went from just being a normal student to being yeah, a general that's amazing how, do you know how many years he was in uh he was enlisted mm, for i think it was it was a long time it was pretty much for the entirety of the of the entire I th- it was either world war one or world war two i think it I have to I have to, I have to look into it. I could ask my I could ask my grandfather but he's he's pretty old now so there is uh hard times create hard men. Mm. Well, that's the thing he, he yeah he was just a, like all, everything I was told about him was that's what he was he was a hard man. He loved his children. Christians well he loved he loved he loved his church, he loved his family. Yeah. But he was a very hard man. Yeah. And the time needs it. You need, you become a hard man through hard times, but then what do hard men create? They create easy times, soft times, because everything's better now. It's true. Sometimes, I guess those people sacrifice a lot of what they could have been uh-huh. for others to be those. Things. Yes, to have a better life, to be more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And then what do those soft, weak times create? They hard create times. well, but why? Because they create weak men mm-hmm. and weak people and soft people. It's just like a it's a loop. There's a balance. Right, because then those weak men, they create hard times. So am I and that's softer, the cycle. Uh, am I a softer at heart, man? I think most of us are soft. And that is a quote by Tim Kennedy. Shout out. He's alive. He's, he's a... Uh, uh, Ex-Navy SEAL. He served Ooh. in the all Special Forces. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and I love that quote because yeah, I think it's exposing us now that quote it's like these hard times are exposing how soft we are how weak we are Mm. like 
L look at how people react to the fear of things being taken away from them. Yeah. Which in reality is such a small thing compared to your life and other people's lives. Hmm. Yes. I feel like so many people have just been born into an age where they haven't really had any major event happen and they might have been grown. So might, maybe their own... Like us. Yeah. The things they value most are just like like things at home, sports. Superficial like things. Superficial things. And then basically when all this is happening because they don't know anything else they just care about the most mundane things compared to the rest of the world and it just shifts and so two things happen you either get massive perspective or you're in denial and you reject it mm -hmm. until it becomes too obvious you can't mm -hmm. or you have to wait until it personally affects you or somebody you know then you take it serious it's well, like even then some people don't yeah but like shit really has to hit has to has to hit the fan for people to take shit seriously sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so honestly, a part of me thinks this needs to get much worse so people can gain a gratitude and perspective and toughness over themselves. Mm -hmm. Because the alternative is we just remain unprepared and soft and weak. And we're so addicted to our superficialities, to mouth pleasure, to food, to how ingrained we are with these corporate structures. We're so reliant on them. We are. For food. Like, I started, every person should grow a vegetable patch. And you can see now all the seeds are being sold out they are. In, in stores. Mm -hmm. People are now buying because they realize, oh, that's the real thing. You got to grow your own food. Um, my local cafe right next to my house yeah. they originally they hang on I've got it here they, re, they rebranded today because because you can't be open now if you're a place selling like coffee food because it's like hospitality people next to each other Gonna adapt they legitimately shut down and have changed their name in the period of like two days and then now I've got pictures here they're now called Tanaka instead of Bloom and check, check out these photos if you just if you just go across like that this used to be a cafe and, but because they grow their own vegetables They've now, and they've got a license. They're now licensed to be a grocery. Holy shit. And they sell, so this used to be a cafe. Wow. And now they just, just sell fruit and vegetables, man. Yeah, I scrolled over to the. Uh... Was that the screenshot I sent you? Oh, okay. I, I just, I just, I scrolled over to another screenshot and said, yeah, I'll come in with, with C-U-M. So I thought I read something that uh, was uh, private and personal seductive maybe it was but it wasn't it was to a it was a joke to a friend <laughs> no but that's that's great that's how you innovate man exactly how good is that for innovating like this all used to be like and they're pretty much and that's amazing not they, only are they selling it like yeah. selling their own vegetables that they're growing yeah but they're also boxing them up into boxes and giving them to people that need it that's great man how beautiful is that well, let's shout them out what are they who are they called tanaka tanaka in they what suburb carlton carlton, carlton carlton north tanaka in carlton north check them out what street uh Brathdown street there you go Shout out. They're doing amazing things. That's all. Just the fact that you can reach, like, you would have to change the interior. You have to get some builders in there. Do they change that or no? No, they legitimately just took out a lot of the spaces where a lot of tables were yeah. and just replaced them with, with boxes and crates of stuff they grow. This is a time to innovate and adapt. Mm. Every adversity has an opportunity for equal benefit. You've got to find yours. Stop complaining. There is, there is ability to be successful and thrive in these conditions. Mm. You don't have to just survive. And so I saw this coming and that's why I'm like, I bought like three, four weeks worth of food ahead of time. Mm. I, when, when Woolworths, before Woolworths stopped doing the deliveries because I, I see the trends coming and because I got the good inter information from people. Mm. I didn't want to just survive. I need 4,000 plus calories a day. I want to motherfucking thrive and still keep growing and getting stronger. And so it's a lesson to all of us. One, we, sh we all need to be less, all the tentacles of these corporate organizations are deep in us. Wording. They're deep in our asshole, right? They're deep, man. Roots or tentacles? All of the above, Tentacle man. Roots. Both. Yeah. Te both. Food security, we rely on supermarkets for. We all need us. We all need to support our butchers, our local butchers. Piero's Meat Merchant um, in Railway Parade Hyatt is the best butcher in Melbourne, Victoria. The world. <laughs> Fuck it, <laughs> they, he is. Because <laughs> I tried them all. 
I know you. You've been to Piero's. They got some good fucking snacks. How bro. good are those sausages, Damn, man? Damn, man. They do some good ass snacks. For my for my Mandarin speakers, they got that lap chong. They got that sweet sweet lap chong. <laughs> lap chong is um is sausage in Mandarin, you know. Okay, next time I'm. In I want Liang Ge lap uh, lap chong. Two sausages. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say, but that was so worth forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting distracted here. The tentacles and roots of these corporate companies are so up our asshole that we need to support our local our local people. Check out Piero's Meat Merchant. Our local butchers, they have, they're, they're more expensive, right? Much high quality. Come from local farms. Um, they're fresher. They're organic. They're grass-fed. They're, they're pasture-raised. Mm. If you care about the energy you're putting in your body, the food you're sustaining your life, then well, I don't know why you shouldn't be. Then go support that. Yeah, legitimately, wherever you are, your area, your suburb, anywhere in the world, look, if you don't know anywhere locally and if you have money to spare, like, like not to other people, like if you just have money to spare, support your locals. Like support them because everyone's going through hardship right now yeah everyone's going through times of not like people especially in businesses which have closed down they need to find ways to because before more laws come into implement where we can get excess money they're they're not there yet they, they, they're struggling and the grocery stores the big gro they're gonna survive man oh dude they'll be fine one of the big ones at the moment are actually truckers truckers at the moment are working as hard as anyone mm. else right now because they have to drive so much more to point. different places i was actually reading on reddit today like they're saying that like at the moment they have a lack of workers and if they are working they're doing overtime they're driving a lot more they're on and a lot of truckers do rely on a lot of a lot of uh, awareness drugs to keep them awake yeah because they actually just need them to get these 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 resources to other places yeah so right now they're doing it really tough and uh, a lot of doctors have said that they've had a lot more truckers come through which they're just a lot of their uh their blood pressures are up or a lot of their uh i guess they're basically just uh not as healthy as they should be because yeah. they're just doing so much more longer hours of keeping themselves aware and awake. Yeah, to be so sleep deprived too. Mm -hmm. Just driving so long hours. shout out to all the truckers right now doing it. Yeah, m much appreciated. Let, let's, it's it's the people who transport our goods we don't think about. Yeah, it's a hard job. Right? It's the, it's the people in the hospitals who are sacrificing their time away from their loved ones. And also their health potentially. Yes, because a lot of medical professionals are getting sick and what happens mm -hmm. if they fail? Then we fucked exactly what happens if they fail and they get sick then expect more tentacles to reach inside not only your asshole but your brain yes well said <laughs> a scholar you are sir there's one thing i'm good at it's speaking so it's food security mm -hmm. we all can gain food security so go get what's called a veggie pot a vet you can do it in your small apartment do you have a little outdoor area we have a balcony Great. You can do it on a balcony. That was what it was okay. designed for. Get some soil, get some fucking plants, build a bit of this. You can put it. Well, yeah. that's the thing. My, my, my housemate was growing fucking his own, his own peppers and his own chilies and Amazing. herbs and shit before. Just start small. Yeah, man. You don't have to buy everything, but you can start small. So food security, support community. This is, it's a wake up. It's a time to realize how we need to restructure the way we operate ourselves as individuals within our communities mm -hmm. okay as a collective as a systematic group mm -hmm. okay so it's food security it's uh supporting community it's being prepared uh do all these the lights are on here i have electricity here well you don't think that can happen you don't think the lights can go out and the people and their services can be affected they most certainly can what yeah what makes you think that shit really hits the fan and now our basic services are off for periods of time because they get sick new laws regulations people just quit because their family i don't there's heaps of examples shit just stops working i just love the saying shit hits the fan totally off topic i realize but just imagine shit hitting a fan just spraying on that's everybody. what i'm that's why it's so bad shtf man Fucking acronyms, bro. <laughs> like, I'm looking at getting a a, a, a Jackery power generator mm -hmm. right now. And they're, like, they're like a thousand dollars, man. Dude, but that's a cheap one. For real? You've looked at them? Some generators are like tens to thousands of dollars. Oh, no man. shit. This is, a, yo, you know, because you want to support like a whole house at exactly. once. Exactly. Yeah, right. So, uh, this is like a portable one you can carry. It's mm -hmm. like six kilos. Uh, 
But I'm like, all right, if things go out for a day and I want to be able to keep my fridge on, keep my keep my meat. Keep your meat cold. Yeah. Don't like, want that shit going off. Like solar panels. Like find a way to get some solar panels so you don't... And do it off the grid, man. Don't... But like, I don't know. The governments have weird systems. Like, you know South Australia has one of the biggest solar powers um, population in Australia? Like the most per capita have... Yeah highest amount of solars great Adelaide. because they there was a stage i don't know if it was right now but it was, it was a, a little bit ago where they advertised it so heavily yeah and i think it's like it's a, it's a huge percentage of south australians that pretty much nearly in certain suburbs nearly every house will have it good every, everyone has their own backup it's really good man when elon musk bring his solar tiles to australia i've already signed up for it mm. um have you heard of them or seen them no so they're like seamless man they're built into the roof you don't even know they're solar, mm-hmm. right? The, the ones we have here, it's very obvious. Obvious, they're just these fucking panels with fucking hex decks and shit. Yes. I don't know what hex decks is, but yes. It was, I was trying to say another word, but that just... You made that up? No, it's... Did from, you just make up the word hex decks? It's from a video game. I'm going to look it up now. Jesus Christ, because sometimes you say words with confidence that... <laughs> I'm just... All right. I meant to say like lots Dark of... Dark Souls 2. No, it's from League of Legends. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but um, but no, I was trying to say like you know when there's heaps of little tiny squares next to each other. Yep. Whatever that word is. Hexagons. Like, like, like a like a beehive, but except 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 instead of hexagons, they're squares. So like a square beehive or a square. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? It's like it's like playing four square, except times those four squares by many more squares. That's eight square, bitch. <laughs> that's more more than eight. That's squares. quick math. Quick math. You get what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Have I, have I explained it good? What else do you think people are so reliant on? Um, human contact. Socializing. Mm. We're a very social culture. And like you were saying, if we can't be... Because not... Don't get me wrong. We still socialize through the internet, uh, videos and stuff. But it's not the same as being face-to-face. Touch, just looking. Exactly. Feeling. I feel if that's taken away for a long period of time, yeah. like you said, it will lead to Isolation. a lot of depression. Yeah. It will lead to a lot of, uh, it will lead to suicides. It will lead to uh, a change in personality, be it like uh, more emotional or just rapid like distress. Like if you take away socializing, like as it is right now, no no bars or, or restaurants are open. Mm. Like don't get me wrong, you can still do it right now, but for how long? What do you mean? Do what? You can still go out to your friend's house and oh. hold like little events. And it's stuff. not a f- see. This is the thing. It's not a for- We're not locked down, motherfuckers yet. All right, but we can we, be we, mobile. We, we, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of time. I still don't think you should go out and be doing that just because we. It's going to be locked down soon. It's just like just, just be ready yeah. You don't want to be haphazard. But guess what? There is enough people who don't take it seriously or who are not abide by the, mm-hmm. the the social norms, and they will help spread this thing. I think that's why America and Australia are going to be affected pretty heavily because we do value our freedom so much and we don't take things as seriously because it's just the way we are it's a cultural thing i do think it's, it's gonna be thing. very interesting how these next six or 12 months go man it is like there's so many ways it could go and it's to- it's a lot dependent on how a community uh, uh sorry a um like the community of people respond and a government mm. can i have some of that water bro you run out, yeah, I ran out bro. you had two glasses is that right i did Careful over the mixer. That's right. We got it. We got that. This is this is coronavirus free water. Um, I don't know if that that's probably gonna, let's get, we're gonna start selling that coronavirus free special price of ten dollars. <laughs> I'll have forty. What happens if the water goes off, man? Do you have water filtration? No, and also if you want to if you if you do want to buy something that does filter water, it's 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 in the thousands as well, man. Nope. Isn't it? Nope. It's less. You don't. We're not talk. We're not talking about. Uh, Are you talking more natural means that is a machine? Sorry, um, I was just looking up the exact brand that I've gotten. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna find it for you. But we're we're not talking about. Uh, there's there's machines that you can get that filter water in your home. You see those those big jugs, yeah. and they have like they have a water filtration system built into them, yeah. like. Uh, and they can be in the hundreds of dollars. Some of them take a long time to fill the water, though. But at least it does. But if we talk about something portable, then you can get something portable for like, we're talking thirty, forty dollars, right? And it can filter, like, 
multiple years of worth of water for an individual. I'm going to pull up exactly what I bought because I got recommended it because like say if you go hiking or you're camping. It's handy to have. It's a good idea just to have some, some a backup. And I don't know if you know, but there's there's some natural springs around. Almost every state will have a natural spring. It's true. It's where the animals go. Right, but they get... No, what I'm saying is we've built... Uh, we've put pipes in and we've built uh, a system where people can drink that water hmm. and it tastes very like metally because it has a lot of minerals, minerals yeah um but look that's a that's another option for people to look at uh in case shit hits the fan you want to make sure you're covered for your water Honey. it's uh, just go on amazon type in water filtration amazon it's there uh soya that's what i got i got a soya mini okay 40 oh they've gone up $42, that's, as things will go up nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, a Soya mini filter. They're like the size of this and you can just drink straight from a stream and it'll filter out all waterborne uh, particulates, bacteria, salmonella, E. coli. Filters up to 100,000 gallons. How long does it take though? A few hours to filter? No, no, no. It's immediate. Immediate? It's immediate, man. It's a, it's a plastic filter. You put the water in, it drips through. And you just see it get clear. So you see, you can put in this murky colored water and it comes out completely clear? Correct. That's fucking dope. Yeah, man. You don't need thousands of dollars. All you need is like $40 for a water filter. Damn. Like, have it. It's just a good idea. Yeah, I think, yeah, especially if you're going camping, like you said. Agreed. What else do people need? In times like this? Um, you don't fucking need more toilet paper than you need food. I'll tell you that. I'm on my last two rolls. I've been going to the shops for the past two weeks, four times a day. Haven't found it. Hold on, hold on, stop. You've been going four times a day for the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. You have gone... Eight times. 38 times. Wait, no. You said four times a day for the last two weeks. 14 times four. Four times in a week, sorry. That's not even 38. No, no, I meant like four times in a week for two weeks. Okay. Like in no, no, four times in the week, not in the day. Basically, I've gone. <laughs> you seven. said four times. A I day. know. <laughs> I have word right. Either way, I've gone pretty much eight times in the past two weeks. Yeah, and I still haven't found any. What I've, are you gonna do? Well, I stole two rolls from work, and now I'm on my last two rolls now. And now that work's shut. <laughs> That's. My- I legit messaged my manager, and I was like, "Hey, I may need to come in and grab the keys to get some shit." Bro, we got some here, man. You should take a couple, man. I'm dead serious. Take uh, a couple. I'm gonna take a couple, bro. But this is this is what I'm saying. Like, like here's the thing. You can just put that up. You could just use that, man. You could just use that. You can just use wa- water. If wor- worst comes to worst, man, you'll be fine. Oh, Shower. Oh, bro. Clean yourself. Yeah, I'll just stomp it down the drain. No, you don't have to shit in the shower. <laughs> the toilet still works. It's true. And, you, and if it didn't, you would go outside first and you'd get one with nature. You'd have a nice squat. You could get some good hip, ankle, and knee thoracic mobility and find a good ass leaf to wipe my butt with that's right man sometimes just grab a handful of grass we'll use your cat if you got an animal you got an animal yeah i got a a cat another thing pet food do you have weeks worth of pet food uh not weeks but i did stock up on double supply normally yet so i've probably got about two weeks worth nice man smart yeah because you know when shit hits the fan morty's gonna have to go get some uh some rats well he does catch mice all the time he doesn't eat them though does he Yes, he does. He eats them? He eats the mice. It's it's disgusting. It looks, he pretty much catches them and he'll play with them for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then when he decides to eat them, 20 seconds. He always starts from the head first. Jesus Christ, you see him eat it? I've watched him eat one. In your home? In my home. Bro, you don't want that rat guts in your home, bro. You might get some fucking Dude, disease. Sometimes he brings them in, I can't stop him. Jesus bro. Christ. But fucking yeah, sometimes, cats. but normally I watch him outside. But yeah, he'll eat it head first and you'll hear him, he'll put it to the side and he'll crunch it. And you can hear each little bone just snap. Oh. And he doesn't stop. He just he literally just crunches head, body, to the tail, eats the whole thing, the whole thing, including the tail. Yep, in twenty seconds. So once you stop playing with it, he'll just swallow whole thing, go about his life. It's fucking. But you just hear like these tiny bone cracklings for just twenty seconds straight. Man. It's it's pretty fucked up. He just ate a fucking rat. And he, dude, I've seen him eat three in a day once. He he catches so Did much. Do you mice. then just like monitor to his diet? Like, guy, yeah, you ate motherfucker three times today. You're not getting any man made food. Nah. I don't, well, the way, the way I feed him, right? So I, he gets two meals a day. Oh, sorry, he gets three meals. He gets two, like, soft serves and a quarter serve of crunchies. <laughs> but the way I go about it, though, right, is 
with the soft serves, I halve them. So he gets fed five times a day, but it's the same quantity. Do you just leave fed. it out and he'll go eat it later? Nah, because I don't like leaving food because it gets, you know, the air gets on there. And it gets so you have to feed him five times a day? I don't have to. I just find it's the way that works. Because if I'm feeding him three times a day, he'll constantly meow and want more. So basically, when I wake up, I'll mm. feed him half a serving. You found a system. Yep, so it works. Trust me. So in the morning when I wake up, give him half a serving. He'll sleep. He'll want more food. Hour later, give me another serving. Another serving. Mm. Another serving. And, and sometimes, if he comes in super late, I'll give him the whole serving because he's been away for so long. So it's just you just figure it out. What's the longest your cat's gone away from you for? Uh, he you, was got away, bit, you got was worried. Away. He was away for three days once. Three, four days. Was that worrying? Super worrying. It was when he was like two years old. And then he just randomly came back. Why don't you put a? Tr- Why do people put trackers on their animals? I do. You do? Yeah. You can see where he is right now. Oh, well, I can't see. I'd have to go to my vet because they've got the tracker in him. He's got a tracker in his ear. Oh no, I mean like on his collar, like a tracker where you can uh, open up a GPS and see it live. Well, I've got his. I've got my number on this collar, so I get messages every week. Really? Yeah, because he's fucking always around other places, meowing and walking into people's houses. Oh really? Yeah, I've had people be like. Hey, your cat's been in our house for three days. We've just been looking after him. And I'll be like, fucking hell, Morty, come home. What do you do then? I tell them, can you please let him out the house so he can come out and come back to me? Because they won't even let him out the house because they'll think he's like abandoned. Oh, God. I'm like, if he's got a name on his collar and a number, he's probably not abandoned. (laughs) Dumb cunts. (laughs) Yeah, but if you're going to abandon your animal, are you going to go to the effort to take off their collar? I've never abandoned an animal. I yeah, but th- you could just think about it. It's like, yeah, you can see how people would come would, to that. I guess you wouldn't give a fuck. Eh? It's just because, like, say if I'm walking somewhere, he'll follow me. He always follows me. And then if I cross a road, he's smart. He doesn't cross the road with me. Well, sometimes he does, but most of the time he doesn't. And if I cross somewhere which he doesn't want to cross, he'll meow like crazy because he wants to follow me. But he's not. He's unsure about the area. And he'll continue to do that until I get back. So say I'm gone for like an hour. Holy shit. Most of the time, I'll come back and there'll be two to three or four people around him just like patting him and like, I'll have messages on my phone. And they'll be like, oh my God, like, oh, he's lost. I'm like, no, he's mine. It's like, oh, but he's been meowing so loudly. I'm like, yeah, it's because I've been away. And legit, most of the time, people will look at me like I don't look after him well enough. They'll be like, oh, you should really like, you know, take better care of him. Or like, they'll just they'll like- say that? Some people will. Oh, and some people, so and some people And some people will give me those looks of just like- You don't know. Yeah. What? Because your cat, your cat meows a lot. Oh, you should take care of him. Is that what the meow means? Do you speak cat? <laughs> Fuck me. Some people Fuck just, me. some people just like to, you know, think they know everything about every situation. Mm. Yeah. Like I just got a loud fucking cat. He's just like me, bro. It's good though that you can you can find some way to communicate. You understand, like some communication of how he meows. Oh yeah, I get it. Like, but also I get a lot of the time that people do give me backlash for that. It's just because they care. Why do you just leave him inside then? Because he's a cat. I don't like keeping a cat inside. They're a fucking outdoor animal. Fair enough. Why I do we... I'd only keep him indoors if like he, uh, if he was more prone to fighting a lot and yeah, getting lots of diseases. Getting, yeah, fair enough. But lately, which I did, there was a time where I had him inside a lot more because he was fighting heaps, getting scars and um, uh, what are those abscesses? Uh, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, an abscess is when you you get infected and your skin gets really bloated with pus mm. and you have to release it. Love that. There was a stage where he got four abscesses in one year because <sighs> he was fighting all the time. To me, he's just out in the streets, man. Yeah. Fight club style. Fight cat style. Yeah. And there were times he was getting sick a lot. So there were stages where I would have him inside more. But lately, he hasn't been fighting much. He doesn't get sick much. I went from taking him to the vet four to six, seven, eight times a year to taking him to the vet once or twice a year. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. See, don't I, get a cat unless you have excess money. Well, like, I don't think you should get animal. a domesticated animal unless you can commit. It seems like, I mean, dogs you train, which makes it more time consuming. But a dog, I'm talking one to two hours a day, hands on, yeah, especially early stages. Definitely. And train it. I've seen people get dogs and not put their, their effort into training. Don't get them. a fucking dog then. Exactly. Just fucking get a plant. <laughs> get a goldfish. And then just see if you don't kill get a that brain. thing. I'm not. I'm not. No way. I'm getting a dog unless I. I have to partition out because mm-hmm. I'm gonna train that motherfucker right if I ever exactly. get a dog. Exactly. I gotta partition out one to two hours in my day to care for it, hands on, clean it, train it. Yes. Man, I training a dog. You you have like a blank foundation. Mm-hmm. You have to teach this dog a language like a baby. Mm-hmm. It takes time. It does. And you have to understand the skill set. 
Then you have to learn a skill set to, to be able to teach an animal effectively. Mm -hmm. You got to get the crates. You got to get the this, the that, the food. How do you know what the fuck to feed them? There's all these layers, man. You got to understand the, the biology of a dog or a cat. Yeah. What? What do you, what do you look at me like that for? <laughs> You're one of the only people that I can, we can just enjoy and just mess around with silence in different ways that people can't. You know what I'm saying? You know? Like, yeah, now. Yeah, good. I see what you're doing there with that pedophile-looking smile on your face. Fuck, man. I would never be a pedophile. Well, see, I think everybody has the capability to commit extreme evil. I don't think I can. I'm sure that's what some... I'm sure that's what some... Uh, what were the camps called? Uh, the, um, in, no, I know what you're trying to think of, the, in, there's a name for them, the determination, something, something, something in nation. Okay. So in the camp, uh, so in Nazi, Nazi, in Nazi Germany, we're talking concentration. About, thank you very much. Holy shit. I knew it was something Asian. So I bet that's what some of the people, some of the guards at the concentration camps would have said years ago, mm -hmm. years before. But slowly, one act at a time, they slowly incremented all the way up to committing these atrocities. Mm. It, wasn't, it wasn't a light switch. We're talking about, okay, now Jewish people, now you have a curfew. You're not allowed to be home by 6 p.m. Okay, now Jewish people, you know, you know, you can't learn, you can't go to the same school. We have different classes now, right? Oh, now you're not allowed to go to school. Oh, now we have your businesses. Oh, now we're going to... Now, if you guys don't abide by us... We're shooting you on the spot. Oh, now we're going to start rounding you guys up for work and labor to help us support the war. Oh, now, because of some ideology by Adolf Hitler, we're going to start eradicating the ones who are unfit to work. Which is one of the most disgusting things that has ever happened in human history. Yeah, definitely. If not the most. Yeah. And what I'm saying, though, is people n almost never contemplate the reality that that could be them. But guess what? It was somebody. And why don't you think that somebody could be you? Why? Do you think you're this extra virtuous special person who's never had a bad thought? No. It could be you. It could be me. And we need to think about it and contemplate it and make peace with it. And I think that's once we have it then, that, that's when we have a really strong character that, that draws the line between good and evil. Hmm. I remember watching that video that you, wrote, that you did about... You did a whole video based on this. Yes, I did. Yeah. It was good. You should watch it. Yeah, that was on the 12... For those who are curious, it was um, my summary of 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. Mm -hmm. You can go back on my YouTube and Facebook and see it. So I feel very strongly about it, man. And... Uh, well, I think it's good because a lot of people will just generally think I can never do that. Like I did just then. It's like I can... And they, but they just don't ever really think about it. It's like, no, no, no. Imagine that you have... And everyone has the the power to, to be that person. Mm. Like it's in everybody. Every human has that. And I think now in the times where we see frequent death and illness through this virus, that it's reminding us of our, it's our sobering us up to our inevitable mortality. Everybody you know is either going to get sick and die or just die. Inevitable mortality. Inevitable so. mortality. Powerful words. Now, I aim to be wealthy enough. I don't need millions of dollars, but I want to be wealthy enough where I can afford the technology, anti-aging nutrition, supplements, medicine, therapy. Yeah, to live a long, healthy life. Yes. I want to get stem cell therapy. Yeah. And also, if you don't have the money to get that in your old age... Old age is a bitch, man. So much shit can go wrong. Well, that's, that's right. You said to me before, you want to live a long, healthy life. What did you say? I want to get to 100, man. I want to live long enough to watch humanity for as long as I can. Bro, if that's your driver, that's such a strong driver. If that really is your driver, Hell which is, yeah. sounds so intrinsic and pure to you, then you need to... I, look, if I was you, if I had that drive, 
purposely because I want to see humanity, mm. which I do as well, partly. Hell yeah. I, w- I would be trying to take care of every, tick every box that I can about my health to maximize that. If you are serious about that, I think I would be considering interventions that would help prolong my health. Hmm. Nutrition, supplements, exercise, sauna, de-stress, meditation, doing something that gives me meaning and fulfillment, really strong social that's, life. That's a lot of dog points. I'm a, I'm a one at a time sort of guy. Do, absolutely, man. It can get overwhelming. <laughs> do one, that's all you can do. Do one at a time, man. One small thing at a time and slowly build the layers. And in five years time, you're look at you. Whatever it is, man. <laughs> we can all do things to be proactive about our, our well-being. As long as you're doing something, then that's something. Yes, it is. And we should celebrate that. But at the same time, we should work towards betterment. Hell yeah. But if you say, hey, man, I want to live to 100 and see how the fuck, what the fuck this universe looks like then, you know, then damn, man, you got to uh, sleep. I know you're a man who has had tumultuous sleeping habits. I sleep fine. It's just my hours can be sometimes a little all over the place. Well, then you don't sleep fine. Okay. But I do have a system these days now. Please share. Well, these days I've been going to bed more so between the hours of 2.30 and 4.30 and getting up at between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Okay. Or 10 to 12, actually. Okay. Sometimes 12.30. Well, look, it's always better to have a consistent routine than no routine, Mm -hmm. number one. And I've heard you many times, You'll, depending on your work situation, you'll have shifting sleep schedules that Mm -hmm. suit around that the reality is sleeping so late into the into the night so much long after the sun has already gone down and waking up so long after the sun's already gone up missing out a lot of sun you are missing out on sun that that's one and you, you can get morning sun as soon as you walk outdoors in the morning that's a big thing people can do but we have four different stages of sleep. We have all these different stages of sleep and some of them are more predominant at certain uh, times of the night. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't get all those stages of sleep. Yes, and you don't get the quality and the length and the depth due to falling asleep at these later erratic times. And it can happen Mm -hmm. in people who wake up really early or it can happen in people who fall asleep really late. So we know that sleep deprivation, sleep dysregulation and affecting your sleep is probably the biggest thing that you can do to shorten your lifestyle, shorten your life and increase disease mm. and decrease current well-being. So if I'm Alexander Mann, I'm like, if there's one thing I, I could do that could have flick the switch for the next hundred years, it's seven to nine-ish hours of high quality sleep within two hours of the sun going down and within two hours of the sun coming up. Okay, so well, I'd do it definitely two hours after and definitely... <laughs> so what, so I'd get up at... I'd go to bed at, say, 10.30 p.m. and I'd get up at around 8.30 a.m. Wait, that's, wait, that's a long ass sleep. No, no, I'd go to bed at around midnight and get up at 8.30 a.m. But the sun doesn't go down at 10. The sun goes down at around... So you'd push that back. Depending on daylight savings. Between 5.30 and 7.30? P.m.? Yeah. Going to, oh, the sun falls down? Yeah. Falls down. Um, well, yeah, the sun yeah, it can have a pretty big down. fluctuation depending on daylight saving. It can be from like this six-ish, like you said, 5.30, all the way to nine, which yeah. we just recently experienced, right? It's pretty big. Um, so you're looking at that latest around 11 p.m., right? Average, generally speaking. But you know what? I know you, you have your socializing, you have your video games. I'm like... So it's, it's tough, man, because your friends aren't necessarily going to change that lifestyle. So in my world, in my head, it makes sense. It can be like, okay, I can just do what I was going to do in the middle of the night. I can do it in the morning. But for me, it can be harder because most of the people that I socialize and have contact with already live life similar to mine. So in order for me to change that, I could be affecting... You will. Yeah. yeah. But It's a trade-off. It's a trade-off for a better lifestyle. It's, you know what it is? It's trading current lifestyle, like current enjoyment in lifestyle, temporary kind of pleasure lifestyle for a longer future, a healthier future. But is that worth it to you? You wouldn't know until, because I could die tomorrow, bro. 
Or maybe maybe I could die in five five years from a freak accident. Like mm. it might, might happen, it might not. But maybe I'll work all of that to work on my health all towards this happening. Yeah. Like, but I won't know if maybe the enjoyment and of that of getting myself better is, or maybe I would have enjoyed more having the life out of the side. Like you just you just don't know. Everything is just a risk. Everything is just. Do you want to do it or not? Yeah. But there are positive effects of creating those changes that you can feel pretty immediately. Oh well, yeah, it'd probably be like everybody knows what it feels like to get a shit night's sleep versus a good night's sleep. Yeah. I had a, I had a okay sleep. I wake up with a bit of a sore back because I was sleeping like this last night. I was sleeping like like a cat, huh? Yeah, I woke up and I was curled into a ball and I was just like <coughs> and I was like, why did I sleep like that? <laughs> I think I was busting too many nuts. How many nuts? All of them. Well, four, four nuts, three, three nuts, three, four. Damn it! How many hours? I don't know, a few. <sighs> Just recharge the old battery, plug her in. I ain't gonna fuck for a week. Why's that? Cause I'm getting older, bro. <laughs> You're entering your prime of your life, man. Just doesn't feel like it. Just doesn't feel like it, bro. It can be. It can be. Yeah, I think maybe I just need a good ass meal. A big ass feast. I'll be good to go. You coming down? I'm coming down. <laughs> <laughs> I said before we did the podcast to have a good feed before you came. I did. I had some garlic bread. That's all you had? Yeah. Bro. I, well, I was going to eat more, but I fell asleep. <laughs> Bro, that's a fucking... You got no protein in there. You just got straight carbs. Carbs. Got them carbs. Well, you need no fat and protein to satiate you. Well, I did have some uh, some dal and some rice that I was going to cook up. You did? Like, re- oh no, I was gonna I was gonna reheat it because it was from work, but uh, I, I fell asleep and then I woke up and was just like, "Fuck! I gotta see Sandy, and he's already thinking I'm gonna be there in 20 minutes, but I'm about to leave, and I'm gonna be there now and a half, and he's gonna send me a message like, bro." Yo, I think I've just I've just checked the time. It's about two and a half hours. I got <laughs> about two and a half hours with you post meal. And then we're downhill. <laughs> well, you reckon I'm going downhill now? You just said. No, you said it. Did you? No, you said it. No, you said Did it. Did I say it? I swore. You How are you feeling? Why don't you tell me? Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Garlic bread ain't gonna satiate you. It's all good. I got some. I got some food at home. I got. I got a lot of bread. I got a lot of. Uh, Got a lot of cured meats. I got some cheeses. Very good. Got some crackers. Yeah. Got some nice. Got some nice beers. I got some frozen, some frozen vegetables, some pies, some, some. Got a, got a bunch of shit to last me for the next two weeks. Okay, Shabbat Shalom. Is that uh, uh, is that Greek? Nope. Is that Italian? Nope. Is that Spanish? Nope. Is that S- Hebrew? Oh, I knew, yeah, Hebrew, that's right. It means like good wishes. I knew that. I didn't know that at all. I've been, uh, there's this really good Reddit live thread mm-hmm. um, on COVID-19. It's the live thread of all the events around the world. Mm-hmm. And it's always updates like every yeah. hour or so. I'm checking it all the time. Is it the one that you can, see, you can see like, oh, there's X amount of people viewing this? Let me check. Is it, is it this one? You can see... That one? Go on Reddit for those who don't know. If you want the best resource on what's all the fucking chaos around the world, um, Dan, it's going to aggregate you a pretty honest depiction. I follow this one. Uh, Okay, so that, yeah, that's a subreddit. Got it. Yeah, it's probably pretty good too. This is a live one. Live one. How do I get, how do I follow the live one? Um, You got to type it in Google. Uh, I'll send you a link later. Custom feed. For those who want the link, go check out my coronavirus two hour comprehensive video analysis, and that's all there. Corona. So what's interesting is about an hour ago, China announced that it's going to partially lift the travel restrictions on the uh, Hubei province on April 8th, which is about one, two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. They're going to lift the travel restrictions. So this is an interesting thing because once you lift restrictions on a country, will we see another outbreak? Yes, 100%. This is the concern because people will get complacent, laws will get released... Businesses will open up again. We will propagate. We will congregate. And then ha- will the second one, if the second one comes, which looks potentially likely, how much worse or better will that be in comparison? I think it will be better depending, like I said, if a cure has been found. 
Like if a cure's been found and everything's getting better and it happens again, it's still out there. There's going to be another. There's going to be another raise. So I think it will be better because assuming that would happen, there would be a cure that's been found. Here's a pretty stunning statistic: around twenty percent of the global population is under coronavirus "quote unquote" lockdown, mm-hmm. order to stay at home as the world enters a critical week in responding to this pandemic. Cambodia uses coronavirus crisis to arrest 17 critics. Hmm. That's what people are doing. There are countries now arresting people for violating their laws and regulations around quarantine and propaganda. I think that's fine. If laws being set to way to, to help people, if one person breaks that, that can affect everything. That one person can stuff up what they're trying yep. to achieve. Absolutely. I think even if even if they're ignorant of everything happening, they should be held accountable for it. Agreed. There should be consequences to actions. Correct. Because without them... There is chaos. Alexander, man. Powerful. Thank you. What a chimp you are. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah! <laughs> <laughs> People going to get a fright from that one. Yeah, probably. I look at the leaderboard on this uh, John Hopkins University. Have you seen the one? The, the, this, this one right here, the Johns Hopkins University... Uh, confirmed cases. No, well, I need to I get a t- seen that one. Oh, this is a live one. Um, I need to get a TV up here and then just so we can both see something. Or a projector. Holy shit, I already got a projector. Dude, you can legit set a projector right there. Brother. What are you doing with your life, bro? Oh, this is good. Oh, oh. that's just, that's even another reason to watch the Facebook or YouTube yeah. right there. And this is the perfect wall for a projector. Oh, this is where I do, my, I teach up here, so I'll, I'll have it usually. Yeah, that's definitely great. set that shit up. Oh, man. And you can, yeah, you can That's just have like level. you can have live things. You legit can just have another person here, just so you could stay here, and they could just be working on it. And if, you know, who's so, gonna do that? I'll fucking do it. Whenever you have guests, and I'll fucking do that, man. And then whenever you want me to do stuff, you either tell me or you just text me on the sly. Serious? Yeah, bro, I'll do it. But it's it's you don't live. I mean, I would love that so much, but you don't live around the area. It's inconvenient for you to get here, bro. If I have a guest lined up, and then you're. Well, you can be late. It's not the end of the world. But I don't have a job. And when we had Jungle Beats on, I would always fucking come out all the time, bro. I couldn't I couldn't pay you, though. Because I don't make no money off this. I don't this. give a fuck. I don't care about pay. I just care about enjoying living. Fuck yeah, bro. And bro, all, and plus on the way there, I can listen to music. I can read. I mean, mm. depending, if public transport gets shut down. That may happen. Then, uh, then I'd probably just have to find a car. You got to get a car. You want to get your license? I'm yeah, sorry. I, I, tried I mean, to, car. I tried to. I do want to get one eventually. I'm just waiting for a time in my life where uh, I'd need one. And now this is a time where I could potentially need one. Because I haven't needed one up to now. Mm. But the problem is, with this laptop being here, you would be coordinating stuff over there. I'd have another laptop. We'd have two separate laptops. And then how would you put that over here? What do you mean? We'll just oh. Think, if you want, if you want if to I show... Want if something you want, up there. Just, just legit send it to me from there to Messenger. Then I just oh. open it there. Then I get it up. Clever man. Like, you don't even need to talk to me. You can just legit just be like typing, oh. like control C, control V. All right. There's ways we got We're going to talk after this. Yeah, we are, man. All right. Um, what the hell was I going to say? Something about... Chimps? Tentacles? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, chimps. You said... Oh, that's right. We're talking about how if... Um, you don't have rules and regulations in place and people aren't held accountable for it, then that's mm. how chaos can be formed. Yes. It is a, that is why there is law. Like a lot of people are just like, fuck the law of freedom, but it is there to have no chaos. Yeah. Maintain order. Yes. There needs to be order. It's weird, man. In the media, it's all they talk about now. It's like, what the fuck did they talk about before on the news, man? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. When the weather was on, uh, like in passing, like walking through my house, like TV was on. I don't, re- I don't really watch it, but um, TV was on. I'm like, that's the weather. They still do that. I don't know. They still did that. It's like, why do you do it? I can look on my phone for every minute it changes. Like, <laughs> that's true. But I'm like, I looking at it like, oh, it's not coronavirus related, and I know we're propagating it as well by talking about it now. But it's like, I can't have a conversation without talking about it. Have you had much? Uh. No, print no well, it's it, the thing is though it, it's affecting everybody right now, right? Yes. So when you're talking about something, there is a high chance that the thing you're talking about is being affected by it, is being affected by it. So it's just gonna it's just gonna arise. It's just gonna come to conversation. It's weird, man. I've never seen something that's affected so many people all at once. 
Yeah, besides your dick. <laughs> we keep that one in the low because, because you know that that's more of a, a subconscious, unconscious, continual effect of everybody. Fucking big words. <sighs> but yeah, but legit, like in our lifetime, this is going to be well. Right now, this is the biggest thing. And the, and like I said, for my grandpa, who's mid eighties, he said it's the biggest thing that's probably happened in a term of weird scales. It's a defining moment. How we respond to this will really reveal our our priorities, our our virtues as an individual and community and a society. Mm. You got anything else you want to talk about? Um, anything you want to touch? You on? need to listen to the weekend's new album, man. Oh, you gotta, you, gotta you, you like it? I do. Okay. I don't think it's as say good as trilogy for example okay but i do think it's on the same level i put it on the same level as uh, beauty behind the madness like did you prefer beauty or starboy more because hmm. i know a lot of people love starboy more but i personally i loved starboy more for like individual tracks i think but as an album i preferred beauty i need to see the discography right now oh there's an after hours deluxe it has 19 tracks mm mm-hmm. Oh, it's a heavy album. Wait, it was it's a thick album. Wasn't it Trilogy, Kiss Land, uh, Beauty, Starboy, Correct. Correct. Mighty Melancholy, Correct. and now this. Correct. So we're hitting every about two years, mm-hmm. which is a pretty good clip rate. Such an odd time like to feel to release an album. It's like the, the media's been drowned with all this news. Yeah. Uh, what did I prefer, Starboy or Beauty Behind the Madness? You know, when Beauty Behind the Madness came out, this was the first time that The Weeknd... Had like, gone sort of mainstream. Yes, and this is after Kissland, so it's like people were, were kind of craving that old sound and like, what are we going to get? Mm-hmm. And they got this new poppy infusion, um, contemporary uh, style that caused some... Mayhem? Like, uh, yeah, it caused some friction amongst the, these older fans. It's like, mm-hmm. it's an adjustment period. Uh, especially when hearing songs like Earned It and um, In The Night. But then you get like The Hills was huge, often oh. was on that. Tell your friends like there's a lot of yeah. great tracks on that man. Oh, two friends so good. Prisoner, Lana Del Rey, like it, mm. it's a really pretty album. Did you know that um, Anthony Fantano gave House of Balloons a three? Uh, like hmm. Why? I mean, what's your review? It's actually a decent review. Okay, he's very good at articulating exactly. his justifications. If you don't agree with him, you'll find that. I find that probably 95% of the time he has a reasoning as to why that your decisions are different and your agreements are different. Like most of the time I do disagree with him, but I find that I, I like to find out how he does and that might help me understand yeah. m- music better for that. Like yeah. I'll go back to track and be like, I didn't see this as this before. Like I still enjoy it, but I can see why he didn't. It helps you understand your own thought processes a bit better. Yes, that man is an amazing art articulating. Yes, and I think that's what's so good about this, man. You, you can have these long-form conversations and you can you can figure out what you think. Mm-hmm. You it takes know. a long time for me to figure out shit. Yeah, but like when you sit down and have long conversations, it's great for that. 100%. And then we, we look at Starboy and like oh, fuck, things like Party Monster, False Alarm. You had more of these upbeat contemporary things like Rockin' and True Colors. False Alarm. Yeah, I remember that. You Buzz still hate love. it? Hey, hey, hey. I fucking hate that song. So shit. He still hates it. Uh, a longer album. Um, I think I preferred Beauty. Yeah, I preferred Beauty. And then my D Melancholy came out, and then it got a bit, it got a bit more stripped back and a bit darker. Sell out my name. Da, 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 da. Fucking tune. Mm-hmm. And then After Hours, which uh, I'm looking forward to listening to. Have you listened to any of the singles? Yes, I have. I have listened to... Except the most recent one was After Hours. After Hours. So you've listened to Blinding Lights and Heartless? Oh, no. I've listened to them all three. Okay. They're all good. Yeah. Mm. The more I listen to them, the more they grow on me. So uh, we obviously can't play this for the people. Not that I even know how through my system. But... Oh. For those who don't know, the, the, the mean that we've been, I mean, fucking with the weekend since trilogy. Love Abel. Well, who was your? Is he your favorite artist? Probably yeah, not. Yeah, he's he's one of them. Obviously, Kanye, right? Yeah, yeah, he's 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 probably the most long-standing one. But I feel like Abel for a time in your life was your favorite. I feel like when I first met you, he was yeah. probably your favorite artist. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it goes in waves, you know. Your your favorite artist goes in waves sometimes. It does. 
because Kanye's been pretty quiet recently. Plus um, his last album was trash. See, I, I don't, I don't see it as trash. I've, I, there's no Kanye albums I think I will, I will say is trash. Um, be, like I see it as trash. I think they had such a strong start from every hour to to Salah. It was I felt that that choir vibe. But uh, that's kind of it. Salah and On Guard are the only good tracks on the album. This is the best track on the album. Follow God. Yeah. You know. It's probably the album that has the least repeatability to me. Well, how many times did you go back to it? When I was in Singapore, I went back to the first two songs, Every Hour and Salah, and the first handful, like, like relatively often, but then yeah. it dies down. It does, man. Um, it has probably, yeah, that's probably accurate for me. That has the most repeatability. But like Pusha T is still like, he still remains as one of the guys for me. Like mm. Daytona, Daytona is was man. is a fucking classic. I still don't fuck with hard I keys, but yeah, that's that's the only miss. That's the not the miss, but it's like it's like it's like I had potential to join the rest of the, like because the rest of the album is like here. Yes, hard keys is like here. It's, it's just, not it's hard just enough. Missing. Exactly. It 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 dipped down. Plus we, that hook is terrible. Sorry. With who is that? It's Rick Ross. Imagine and, Dragons. Imagine Dragons. Okay. Fuck them. Imagine not doing music. What's that plane doing? Is it driven an airfield nearby? Moorabbin Airport. Ah, cool, cool. Um, I just, like, sometimes I look out and I look at planes and helicopters and I'm like, whew, just a matter of time before one of those goes down and I see it happening. These are all just two passenger planes, though. They're all just just people just flying. Trying to run away from that, fly away from that coronavirus. Can't outrun the wind, with, bro. I don't fuck with that coronavirus. Push T. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, new album should be dropping this year. We'll see, won't we? Have you listened to Childish Gambino's new album? First three tracks. How good's the first track? And he came out like, what genre is that? He came out strong, man. It's, I don't know if you can genre it. It's kind of like, it's super experimental and it's kind of a blend between his last two albums. Yeah, we're, we're listening to Algorithm right now. And, and he's, he's such a fucking, I don't even know what word to call it. Innovator. Well, he's, he doesn't. Well, he what he doesn't call his album anything. He doesn't album. The tracks are just random numbers. The tracks are numbers. His album title is the dates, the fifteenth of March. I think all that will change. You think so? I think so. It's terrible for marketing, but I really don't think he cares at all, no. and I respect that. It's just about music. Mm-hmm. Frank Ocean is is a long lasting guy who will, uh, I think, has an iconic place in music. I think so as well. Um, but and then there's people and this is not one of my favorites but like well actually Janae Oka I still gotta listen to her album which is regarded like as pretty highly right yeah, now yeah I saw it sold really well it's the highest selling female album since uh, Lemonade yeah by Beyonce which is and good I did, for her man I didn't know she had fans like that like what like that go around to that like yeah, that yeah I didn't know people were that interested in her like, yeah. her, f- her fans are strong like mm. Because I've never listened to a, an album by her and been wowed. I've always gone away with one or two tracks. Always one or two tracks. Are you saying you were wowed? I haven't listened to it yet. Oh, okay. Man, see, I've, I've been so busy that listening to music has taken a back step because I've been listening to so many videos and podcasts and information about all this. That's just how it is, man. Life always changes. You'll probably go through a stage where you get back to it like that. Oh, yeah. For sure, man. Look at how that shit comes, bro. And Ruby Red, I want to shout out. No, sorry. I want to shout out Susan Santo, who I linked you, mm-hmm. who I don't think you listen to. I don't think I did, no. Uh, she is a country rock musician who released an album called Ruby Red, and it's, and it's, I love it, man. 2017 is a three year old album, but I went to it after seeing her on, on Rogan's podcast. Mm-hmm. Him, her, and uh, um, Junior, uh, something, something Junior, um, Gary, Gary Clark Junior. Oh, yes, Gary Clark Jr. Who you love, right? He's awesome, man. He's amazing. Yeah. Great musician. Absolutely. If you want some jazz, jazz, some rock, 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 jazz, rock, some pop influences. Yeah. And he's got so much influence. He's unbelievable. His, his guitar is uh, on point. And Jay Electronica's, Jay Electronica's album. I fucking love it. Like, a written testimony. I just love how Jay Z didn't show that he was featured on any tracks. And you listen to the first track, and then he comes in, you're just like, that's hope. And then every track he's on. Is it every track? Every track he's on. Really? Every track? Yeah. Holy shit. Have you listened to the album? 
I have listened to it, yeah, but I, was like, I thought one or two didn't. No. Oh, uh, maybe, but I feel like Hove's on every track. Oh, my God. What, like, I wonder why... Like, that's such a nice surprise, but it also has such capabilities for J Electronica's first album in... How long? We've been waiting 10 years, man. Hold on. This is his first album. Yeah, man. We're, like, dude, he's been releasing random singles for the past... He's been signed to Rockefeller for like 10 years without an album. Holy shit. You know what I love? Letter to Fallon. Who's mm. Fallon? Do you know who the... Jimmy Fallon. Oh, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. Why did he do that? I don't know. Those who don't know, quite a few wouldn't. Explain J Electronica. Explain him. He's an artist that uh, popped into the scene around 10 years ago, if not longer, and he had the odd few singles, and they were just so different and captivating that he got such a huge buzz around him, and Jay-Z found out about him and signed him, and everyone was just like, fuck, man, Jay-Z signed this artist, he's buzzing with these few singles, he's going to blow up, and then nothing happened. And then he released, say, another single. Do you remember the track Control with Kendrick Lamar? Yeah. People like Jay, up. Jay Electronica just randomly appeared in this track with Big Sean and Kendrick. People were like, oh, fuck, Jay Electronica's going to come back. Then nothing. And then Jay Electronica would randomly appear on random YouTube videos or random Reddit posts or random features. Then nothing. <laughs> so he went from all this, like, build up and build up and build up to just not doing anything. And then just out of the blue, an album. He's so clever. I think his his lyricism, his wordplay is like a push T Kendrick. R- reminds me of that. It's so different, and I f- I just think his wordplay is just like it's. I just can't help but say the word nature, because he has the way he flows. It's like he mentions a lot of things to do with space, the cosmic, yes, physics, uh, nature, beauty, religion. Like yes. it just has such a a nature feel to it. Like Great, it's, it's yeah. breathing. His his lyricism is different. It reminds me a lot like Aesop Rock in a way. Man, he's such. A, he's, he's probably the most talented unknown um, artist who has no. Who just released his first album? Like I, had, I don't even had a had a con- describe him. Uh, but I wonder why they decided to do a surprise Jay Z collaboration. Well, the thing we know, man, is they could have had these tracks done all done five years ago. We just don't know. It's true because. They're not talking about current events, yeah, are they? Yeah, like, maybe this has been in the dark for a long time, man. Because Jay-Z sounds good on this. <laughs> not that he hasn't been sounding good. You know you know how yeah. I feel about 444? Not as strongly as I do, obviously. Yeah. Like, remember when I didn't put in my top 10 how how hurt you were? Yeah, man. 444. Jay- Jay-Z's are. another artist up there, man. He, he is... And just how he carries himself as a person. So, so hearing him on this is, must be like so good for you. It is, man. But but at the same time, like I'm always a guy who leans towards harder hitting tracks. I really I really enjoy a strong strong production that has a presence that's mm. not as mellow. Like ape shit. Yes, things like that. But it doesn't always have to be that. Mm. It can be in between, right? It can be like, like subtle, subtle back this motherfucker Bruh. it's been a while since we said that <laughs> bangers subtle bangers yeah. right which Jay-Z is very good at so I have a tendency towards that and I feel like this album doesn't doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't um, feed that in me hold up I'm gonna need a jacket I'm getting cold oh you turn off the air conditioner there's an air conditioner yeah I turned it on just give me the remote I'll turn off the air conditioner I just gotta keep it I'm a guy who likes the cold quite a bit man I like the cold too um, I'm just a bitch <laughs> Soft times, soft man, oh, hard such. times, hard man. So you're saying you're a hard man? No, I would never say that. Uh, oh, that's... that's up to other people to determine and give me that. Um, I know who I am and I know who I'm trying to be. Okay. Uh, and that's less soft. Yes. My burp kind of tasted like... Weird. It's a, you know what it's a great time for? Like, it's tempting. When a forced isolation will be will be committed, video games. Well, yeah, I can see the allurement. You know what's really weird is I thought that in the first few days of not working, I'd be gaming a lot, but I haven't gamed once. What have you been doing? Reading? Yeah, I've been reading a lot more. I've been, I've been just, I guess, speaking to people more. I've been fucking more. I've just, I've, I don't know. I've just been engaging more. In just with people non non 
electronic yeah. computerized things like don't get me wrong i'm probably gonna game tonight or i'll probably game a lot more but I, like i just it's weird it's kind of like gaming to me is a reward it's a reward from getting through a day of work or getting through a game of hardship like it's just mm. like it's a way to, but because i haven't been doing anything else i don't feel the need to use it i feel like the more this is going on the more i'm realizing that gaming might not have been as much addiction to me as I thought. It's been more of a reward to me. Interesting. Because I've always, like, say when I'm doing housework around the house or I'm trying to get study done, I'll game in between that. And I'd always game in between that, between maybe maybe a thought because I just really needed it. But it's just because it makes me feel happy. And because I'm not necessarily working as hard or doing as much, I just don't feel the need to do it more. Hmm. So interesting, isn't it? It is because that changes the way you approach previously thinking of it as more of an addiction and, pre- and now thinking of it as... Go ahead. Oh, no, no. I was, I was agreeing with you. But like, say if I'm, if I'm thinking about doing it, I'll, like say the other night I was at home and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll play some games. I just got on the computer and I just, just, I just didn't feel like I wanted to. I was like, huh. Because I I, in my brain, it was just like, you could go along, you could play it, but like there's just no wants. I'd rather be reading or I'd rather be seeing someone or i'd rather be just eating i don't know i just interesting whereas if i get home from work normally i'm just craving it you know what i think that's a lesser of two evils if addiction is the alternative then it's a better situation to be in because now you're using it you're associating the video game as a reward for certain conditions yeah. certain work and the good thing is you're replacing that with other things or mm-hmm. you can replace it with other things and other things take its place Mm-hmm. So now you're more in control. I like that. Yeah. But it's a great time because with people can be productive in so many other ways as people uh, being closer to family and friends and uh, communicating and social, so socializing. What are you doing? This is a giant neck here. Sorry, I'm listening, but like, look how long this is. Uh, it's a very... Uh, yeah. it's up. Anyway, continue. You're a unique human, I tell you, as a man. I'll take that to you with the, to the grave, baby. To the grave. I love that. So it's going to be an interesting time for people's habits and productivity. And what? The, how are they going to fill that time? What are you going to do? Well, How are you going to make the most of your time here? I think if I don't find any work outside of what I'm doing now, I probably want to maybe start doing some, like I said, do maybe some more reviews again. Or I also want to start my friend who's doing acting at the moment he wants to start doing some skits to fill the time so awesome. I think I want to try and write some skits with him maybe film jungle, some short jungle, skits jungle beats skits jungle yeah. beats comedy so I'm thinking of uh, maybe doing some more writing I want to try and because I'm not going to be studying until next year now I want to maybe try and push myself to start either doing some free courses or, yeah, make, do, or, try, or try and keep my knowledge up to date with, yes. with music and uh, using different um, project programs uh, I want to get a lot more books maybe read a lot more I don't know I've, I've got a lot of things like I don't think I'm ever going to get bored in fact I don't think I ever really do get bored because I'm a sort of person where because I enjoy already a lot of things I don't really have any time where I'm not bored so I feel like having all the spare time is probably going to make me even just have even more to do yes and that, that you have two choices you can take full advantage of your time to be productive to be educated to become a better person mm. or you can lament be scared and just lock yourselves indoors and and not do things that are productive for you. Yeah, it's a choice. I'm gonna try and use my time as much as I can. Good for you, man. Like I'm gonna, even though I might not be making money this period, I'm gonna value this period and hopefully better myself for it. And maybe, despite all this terrible shit happening, maybe it will be a good thing in the long run for me. Yes, th- th- there is, there is opportunity and positives that we can take from it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this is something I pulled up. Isaac Newton had the most productive period in his life when he self quarantined during the plague. Mm-hmm. Uh, he quarantined himself in his childhood home and it was the most productive time in his life, they say, because he discovered calculus, the laws of motion as well. And so it makes us all question, you know, how will we spend our time if we have to be forced into quarantine? What could we do to benefit our life? I think 95% of the human will upload just dumb videos, but there's going to be a small percentage that might just do something super progressive for us. Let's do it, man. Let's evolve and level up this civilization and ourselves, man. Never let. I'm ready to level up. I'm ready to become a fucking cyborg. It's happening, man. One day at a time. We will become one with the machine. I do love the, the game Deus Ex Machina. Mm-hmm. 
It's uh, all about a civilization in the future. I think it's in like the 2300 where people rely on augmentations as a part of life. So nearly everybody has like augmentations. So people will just have yes, metals. Yes, I played that. You played it? Yeah, when I was a kid. But not only is it like that, it's super political. Yes, the storyline was very strong. I I love that man. Yes, it was, it was such a great way yes. to escape into that world. Like it was super political. That's, about, it was very ahead of its time. Yeah, about how augmentation not only affected that, but affected like the way the world was. The so. government regulates yeah. like uh, policies and. I never played behavior. the second one. I've got it, but I never played it. But I heard it was good too. But Thank yeah, that was a man. really strong story game. It was good fun. And a, a good way of just imagining what like what life will be like in the future yes. if it's similar. That's a good thing. It makes you question the future mm. in a positive way yeah alexander man believe it or not we just did three hours isn't it amazing that what a little bit of garlic bread can do <laughs> imagine what a full feast could do probably would be just busting nuts left right and center here all over the place all right we're out of here stay 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 healthy chimps i hope you enjoyed a less weirder time with me yeah it's good to just like talk talk about the what's been going on and just talk, just like man talk about some things that aren't related to it just talk some chimps man yeah it's talking chimps bro yeah throw don't a, forget throw it a man little, throw a little shit you know it is. <sighs> stay away from that coronavirus see you chimps stay healthy Ooh!